Pero. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 19th of November 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light on the right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, <coughs> which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their life in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Um, we've got quite a long agenda tonight, um, so I'm just going to see how we're travelling, but I'll probably call for a break. A, maybe a 10 minute break around 7.30, depending where we are on the agenda, um, just for a, a comfort break. I know you can leave the chamber when you like, but I can't. So we might uh, just have a small break then. Um, there are no apologies or leaves of absence tonight. Uh, that takes us to item number six. Oh, no, sorry. oh sorry, yes, I do have Councillor Donovan who uh, is unwell. Uh, Councillor Moran, was that what you were? That's what you were saying. Yeah. And I'll be here. Um, I'm now looking for confirmation of the minutes from the 22nd of uh, October. Thank you, Councillor Sims, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, members, are there any changes, discussion? If not, I'll go back to the mover, Councillor Sims. <laughs> Thank you, members. To the vote, those in favour? Those against, <laughs> that is carried. Uh, there, are, uh, there are no deputations this evening. Um, we takes us to item number eight, uh, which is a petition to note. I'll ask for someone to move the noting of the petition. Thank you, Councillor Abrahams today. And a seconder, thank you, Councillor Kouros. Um, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is accepted. Um, members, um, also we have uh, quite a number of staff in the room this evening, um, so I am, with your indulgence, going to move items 17 and 18, which are the confidential items, to the front of the agenda uh, to be dealt with first, um, and uh, then we will continue with the rest of the meeting. So I will look for uh, a motion for exclusion. Uh, I have five items presented with the request for consideration in confidence and each item requires a motion decision to order the exclusion of public to enable the consideration in confidence. Can I have a move of 18.1.1? Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Uh, members, 
If not, to the uh, uh, Councillor Abraham today. Sorry, no, Councillor Martin. Look, I, I do think this is slightly irregular and it doesn't actually uh, have any regard for the public gallery. We have members of the public who are here for particular motions at the beginning of the meeting. And uh, though I do feel for staff who are required to wait here until towards the end of the meeting, um, they are in a slightly different position to members of the gallery who've made a special trip here in order to uh, uh, participate or witness uh, some of the discussion, which is in the first part of the, um, of the meeting. So look, I, I will oppose this. I think it is irregular. Okay. Councillor Moran? Yes, I can understand on the Mayor what you're doing because there's some very important uh, confidential items, but as we're going to, we're here to complete the meeting, I totally agree with um, Councillor Martin. Um, the, our administration um, are paid for these overtime hours. The public is not, and we sit here to serve the public, not the administration. And if we start chucking the public out to the, for the convenience of the administration, I think the tail is definitely wagging the dog. Our members, it's to the floor. Uh, Councillor Abrazin, uh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. Just to get some clarification for the administration, this is not purely about council staff. I believe there's extended consultants as well, is that correct? Through you, Lord Mayor, yes, that's the case. Okay. Thank you very much. Members, it's uh, to the floor. Uh, those in favour? Those against? Division. Division. Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please rise and remain standing till all names have been called? Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canal, Councillor Kerra, and Councillor Hyde. Members, I'll go to 18.1.2. I need a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder. Councillor Canal. Members? Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, I didn't see your hand. Those in favour? Oh, okay, that is carried. Uh, that takes us to 18.1.3. I need to look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Canole, and a seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members, Councillor Canole to sum up. Uh, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, item number 18.1.4, I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Abraham today. Members, Councillor Hyde, sum up. Oh, my apologies, 18.1.4 has actually been uh, removed from the agenda. 18.1.4. Uh, wasn't required, um, which takes us to 18.2.1. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, and the second to Councillor Abraham today. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. And the final one, 18.2.2. Look for a mover, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder, Councillor Hyde. Members, those in favour, those against, Sorry, members, those in favour, those against, uh, that is carried. Um, so members of the gallery and staff, um, I believe we'll take uh, tw maybe 20 to 30 minutes maximum. Um, so I, I would ask you if you are, can indulge us for that um, period of time. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, so any members in the gallery and staff not associated with these items that are in confidence, 18.1.1, 18.1.2, 18.1.3, 18.2.1, 18.2.1, 18.2.2, 18.2.2, 18.2.2, 18.2.2, 18.2.2, 18.2.2, 18.2.2, 18.2.2, 18.2.2, 18.
Okay, members, we will go back to the meeting. Um, we go to item nine on the agenda, which are the recommendations of committee APLA, the special committee and the audit committee. Um, 9.1 is the recommendation of the committee special, which is heritage, our future heritage strategy and action plan for mover, Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder, Councillor Sims. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it, Councillor Sims? Members? Not back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Uh, members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members of the gallery, thank you very much for your patience. We do appreciate it um, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. We are on item 9.2, which is a recommendation of the committee from the 12th of November, which is a review of the council's event noise mitigation standard procedures. I look for a mover, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Sims, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, reserve my right. Councillor Sims. Members? Not back to the mover. Oh, sorry, Councillor Kerrin. I'll speak just briefly. I'll just flag to the chamber that I have uh, had discussions with administration uh, about this. There is some a little bit of ongoing work just to feedback on um, on a finer point to do with uh, the uh, uh, beats, the interruption, uh, the effect on uh, residents uh, of, of, of base beats. Uh, and the question I, I put to them was about uh, measuring and whether the uh, the current system of measuring is an average over 15 minutes. So I've asked for a little, just a little bit of uh, uh, work uh, on whether we're not allowing through inordinate levels of beats because we've got an average rather than instant. Um, the administration has undertaken to to look into this, get back to me. This can obviously be changed at any time, uh, but I'm just flagging with the chamber that's uh, that's something we're looking at. All right. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Any other speakers? If not, back to the mover, Councillor Martin. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, that takes us to recommendation two, which is the Adelaide Parklands Expenditure and Income. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Second, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? No, I do not. Councillor Hyde? Members? Not back to the mover, no, Councillor Moran. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. That takes us to recommendation three, which is the Adelaide Zero Project, Councillor Hyde. And I'll look for a second. Thank you, Lord Councilor. Mayor. I just have a minor amendment to the uh, alteration to the recommendation. It's an alternate motion? Yes, alternate motion. Uh, members, it's on this. Uh, Very short, please. happy to speak to you. Places the topic of the Aboriginal mobility on the next Capital City Committee agenda. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank seconded. you, Lord Mayor. Just to, just to clarify, obviously, there was extensive discussion around this at committee. Um, uh, given the complexity of issues regarding uh, Aboriginal mobility in the parklands and homelessness generally, I think it would be wise to us, for us to conduct high level discussions um, uh, with the state government. I understand there are around 17 different state government agencies involved um, with this issue, which is obviously a significant amount. Um, and so discussing it in that forum with the state government, um, uh, I think would be useful. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Did you wish to speak? Right? Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just a, a question of uh, the mover, if that's okay. Um, at the committee, when we talked about this uh, last week, I um, wanted to get a sense of where the uh, Adelaide Zero project um, stood with this proposal. And I'm just wondering whether um, there's any advice uh, that Councillor Hyde is aware of um, from the Zero uh, Homelessness Project in terms of their position on this. Uh, so seeking clarification, Councillor Hyde, did you wish to respond? Um, I've had no specific advice regarding 
generally this uh, there is they have requested generally speaking um, that we address the matter with the premier which is why I've added this amendment in um, uh, because of the complexity of the issue and they've, they've got uh, a, a couple of a couple of suggestions on a particular way forward um, but it's us for us to discuss that at that high level and then bring that back to council I think so councillor Hyde is not aware of any specific um, advice has administration received any advice administration? CEO? It's very well, Mayor Caro is just coming down. She's the person that's been doing this for us. Thanks, Caro. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I can't speak on behalf of the Adelaide Zero Project or the Don Dunstan Foundation, um, but I was part of an Adelaide Zero Project steering group discussion late yesterday, at which a position on the requirement for additional funding for the Aboriginal Mobility Project was formed, and we're project partners representing state government agencies, social services, corporate partners and the Don Dunstan Foundation discussed the type of state government-led interagency collaboration required to hear from Aboriginal communities what their needs are uh, when they come to Adelaide and how best to provide for these in a way that minimises harm to these visitors and minimises impacts on city residents and businesses. Uh, a co-chair of the Adelaide Zero Project has, form, has provided a formal position uh, from the project today uh, to administration. Uh, the project recommends a high-level task force commissioned by the Premier that tasks the Chief Executive of the Department of Premier and Cabinet, as well as Commissioner for Aboriginal Engagement, to develop and coordinate an intensive response of essential state government departments, along with council and non-government agencies to reduce the risk of harm to mobile Aboriginal community members visiting Adelaide. The Adelaide Zero Project is willing to actively participate in order to develop a safe and culturally appropriate response. Funding is not required for this purpose, but rather an urgent joint task force charged with implementation of the strategy. Just to clarify, Lord Mayor, so if the funding is not required for that purpose, what will the $60,000 be going towards? Uh, is that a question of the administration? Yes, or we'll the move. Yeah. Councillor Hunt? Yeah, for Councillor Sims' benefit, um, the $60,000 would be going towards implementing um, the generally Anglicare-led solution, which is for uh, a transitional accommodation in a semi-wet space. That needs to be a purpose-built facility for, for housing Indigenous people that come um, to the city from country, whether it's regional South Australia or the Northern Territory. Um, there are a few different aspects to it. In, in order for us to, be, to pull together the agencies, that's what they want the task force for to pull together those agencies and to make sure that communication is there. But then the, the solution itself actually needs to be funded, needs to be built, um, a capital expenditure and then operational. I wouldn't suggest we have operational expenditure in our budgets. Thank you. Look, on the basis of that, um, I'm happy to uh, support this, um, but just to flag with members that I will be looking at other opportunities to spend the remainder of the money that we've got um, allocated in our budget. I think we should um, allocate the, the full amount. Um, but um, given there's going to be a broader discussion happening, um, then uh, look, it makes sense to progress this. Thank you. Members, Councillor Martin. Uh, look, I, I'm struggling with this. Um, I understand this motion takes $60,000 of ratepayers' money and gives it to the Adelaide Zero Project for a uh, assistance in developing a program related to Aboriginal mobility, which includes a wet area, according to the councillor who's proposed this, while there was a meeting of all government and non-government agencies, which resolved that the best way forward in dealing with Aboriginal mobility issues was for the state government to form a multi-agency task force to deal with the issues and to reduce risk uh, uh, associated with uh, issues associated with Aboriginal people drinking mobility and so on. Is that right? Have I got is, it right? Is that a question of administration, it Councillor is a, Martin? Yes. Uh, yep. Through you, too. Yes, that's right. Okay. Okay. Well, look, I can't support this. Um, this is 
just the kind of motion that uh, the team announces constantly. It, it is Councillor a Martin. motion. Uh, which part? Councillor of, Martin. Which Can part? What I said. Do not uh, like Lord Mayor. Was it criticism of the team? Councillor Martin, can you please speak to the motion? Well, I, I am, and what I'm saying is that this is the sort of motion that my colleagues would object Thank to. Thank you. Oh, you prefer, I understand. Don't mention Team Adelaide, and I won't. Um, this is the kind of thing that my colleagues object to. It is a motion that has been formulated on the whim of a councillor who thinks that the best way forward is to formulate his own response to a complex social issue with um, uh, contrary advice from the agencies who all believe it's best handled by the state government. But the councillor is going to come riding along on a charger and hand over $60,000 of ratepayers' money to an agency that is developing a policy that's not consistent with what's likely to come out of the state government task force. This is just a nonsense. If, if the councillor was doing the right thing, then he would have spoken to the administration. The administration would have provided us with advice about the way in which this would be dealt with. And then councillors would have had the benefit of informed opinion and be able to make a decision. Now, in this circumstance, this, this is just a nonsense. And, and uh, there's no point in talking about it because I know the team will vote for it. But uh, I, I just suggest to you, you cannot possibly support something that is contrary to what agencies are saying they require. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Just a you know, quick question of administration. Um, the new recommendation from the Zero Project um, meeting that was held yesterday. Um, what, what, what's the next step? I mean, is the body that's being formed or is the uh, Premier's task force that's being established is going to require a level of funding to support this? What's the next stages, if you don't mind? Thank you. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the project steering group of the uh, Adelaide Zero project yesterday uh, decided to approach the Premier and to uh, request this task force. Uh, obviously that hasn't had time to be actioned and we don't uh, you know, have a sense of what the response uh, will be at this stage. And I guess before the task force is actually formed, we don't have any indication of the funding that will be required or, or other resourcing to achieve what- uh, Thank you. Um, and just in the uh, question, because this is talking about Anglicare potentially, um, was Anglicare also involved in that process yesterday? Through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, the CEO of Anglicare is co-chair of the Adelaide Zero project. So look, I'm not, um, I'm not potentially sure. I mean, there might be an opportunity there if the Premier decides to establish a task force for that task force to require some funding and assistance, and potentially this is where some of our funding may come in um, and it might deliver better outcomes. I'm not specifically sure if it needs to go to a solo project. And I'm hoping Councillor Hyde in summing up can explain potentially where that 60,000 will go. Um, and if now in light of the new information we've received, potentially the whole funding needs to be put on hold and potentially look at um, how we could work with the state government through the Capital City Committee to be able to achieve maximum bang for our buck. Um, I'm not sure if it's something you'll be able to address in your summing up. Uh, it seems to me though that task force is a long way from being established. There's still a Premier needs to agree to it. Um, there needs to be state government moving on it. The organisation needs to be the same. It needs to be funded through a budget. And before, we know, it, it's, place. before we know it, it's a year or so away where I'm imagining this funds, these funds will go in this financial year to support people that are, are in need. And it might be something that we do in the interim whilst the task force is established and then potentially the remainder of the funds that Councillor Sims was talking about could potentially go in collaboration with the state government because we've always said in from the initial place of this motion, the reason council was prepared to put the money up as part of the budget process uh, was because we were looking at the state government to also co-fund and... Councillor Sims and Councillor Moran, so please. To, to co-fund and work through that process. So potentially what I would like to hear in the council of summing up, if this is a immediate measure, because I believe the task force is a long-term measure. If this is an immediate measure, if it's an emergency, then I'm happy to support it. 
if it's not an immediate measure and it's not an emergency and it can wait for the task force to be established and funded, then I'd ask that that funds, if this motion was to fail, that we will basically sequester those funds and hold them for the time being until the task force is established. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Um, can I move a yeah. um, I'd like to um, just allocate the money, um, uh, leaving out the Aboriginal mobility and part five, uh, because I think, I mean, I was going to vote for that, but it seems that it, that, that is going to be covered, should be, should, the funds should be allocated by the project, not by us directing the project. Now, I'm very keen for money to be spent on our... So, Councillor Moran, oh. before you speak to it, can I actually get your wording for the, oh, the we'll amendment? Just, um, number four be just that all, um, allocate 60000 to the Adelaide Zero project. Thank you. And I'll look for a seconder. Uh, Councillor Sims, you've already spoken. I'll look for a seconder. Not the amendment fails. Lapses. Councillor Martin, is that another question? It is. Yes. Um, uh, the uh, Councillor Hyde said in proposing this allocation of funds uh, prior to there being a state government task force um, to look into this matter, that the funds would go uh, towards the development by Anglicare of a wet area, partially to, uh, it was mentioned, I, I didn't hear it. It would, please clarify, yeah. They're considering a number of options, which also include uh, accommodation and a semi-wet area, which means a regulated uh, place where you can drink, but also accommodation is the main thing. And could I ask the administration what is a semi-wet area and where would it be located? Through you, Chair. A semi-wet area, uh, I guess, has been discussed for um, some time as a way of supporting uh, people who have health issues related to uh, the use of alcohol to support them to uh, be accommodated and to have social services wrap around that accommodation to minimise harm to them and to others in the public realm. Um, a, a kind of a supervision of uh, alcohol consumption in the control environment. Yeah, it, it uh, presumes that someone with uh, an alcohol issue, maybe a, an alcoholic or a substance abuse um, issue, uh, is not able to immediately stop that use as part of their health condition, but needs to do that in a supervised way. And the best way to do that is if they are safe and accommodated and have social services wrapping around them. Uh, and the councillor has suggested that this would be uh, established as an option by Anglicare. Are we aware of where Anglicare is proposing to establish this semi-wet area? We're not aware of any proposal by Anglicare that's a live proposal at this moment. I see. To my knowledge. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. I could sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, obviously, there's some confusion with this. Um, my understanding, and I was aware of the request for a Premier's Task Force to deal with this, um, and the whole point of putting number five on there is that we would have that discussion uh, alongside AZP, which we fund, um, at the capital city, and we would have that discussion with the Premier. Of course, the steering committee for AZP happened yesterday. That was after, and it was reported in the media as well, um, after we already put some money on the table in the committee last week, which we're formalising tonight. Um, what has seriously been lacking in this area is leadership. Leadership is what has been lacking. Um, uh, and furthermore, uh, once the leadership is, uh, is in place, which is part of what this motion last week in committee uh, sought to lock in and what it seeks to lock in tonight in council, then we look to funding the solution. So there's two aspects here and they're, they're muddying the waters. It's not a, it's not a this or that. Um, it's not a, if we have this, we don't have this. It's um, uh, yes, they need to fund uh, this option that Councillor Mark was asking questions at. To answer your questions, Councillor, they haven't identified a site yet, but uh, they're working to. Um, they're well on their way to, to, to doing that. Um, and part of the newfound vigour for finding a solution is because this council is providing leadership on solving the issues of Aboriginal mobility and transient populations that come from country um, to the parklands and to the city. That's what's kicked this whole thing off. It's because we are willing to stand up 
and say, we want to work with the state government, we want to work with AZP to solve this problem. That's what's got all these discussions underway. That's why the steering committee are looking at this in part. Now, um, the funding is one thing, and yes, there does need to be a Premier's task force in place as well, given the issue uh, that the Department of Aboriginal Affairs sits with um, Premier Stephen Marshall uh, in uh, DPC. Um, uh, and it would be best to have this matter um, led by the Premier also. They are different issues, and, and that is why I've added it in as well for us to conduct those higher level discussions. So I would implore our councillors, um, we know that we have issues uh, in the parklands currently, particularly in the southern parklands, but, but particularly in South Ward, throughout the entirety of South Ward. Um, we know AZP are working towards a solution, and now with point five, we're acknowledging that we need to work with the state government to provide leadership. And that's what this, that's what this motion does. It provides leadership and it provides funding towards a solution. Um, I would implore on you all uh, to have that leadership um, have the wherewithal to acknowledge that this is a problem uh, and to say that this council will stand up and fix it after many, many decades, years um, of inaction on this issue, um, of the previous state government sticking their head in the sand and pretending it doesn't exist. We're at the point now, we're at the point now where it's too hard to get alcohol on country for these communities because of various uh, schemes in place up there. Um, uh, and so uh, problem drinkers are forced to come to the city in order to get access to what they're addicted to, to continue the substance abuse. This motion seeks to address that. Um, I would say to all of you councillors, please do not be enablers in allowing this to continue, particularly in my work. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members, that takes us to recommendation four, which is the 2019-20 quarter one finance report. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran. And a seconder, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, no, no, Deputy Lord Mayor. No, no. no members. Not back to the mover, Councillor Moran. Summed up. Thank you. To the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. <coughs> Members, that takes us to item uh, recommend. Oops. Oh, thank you. That's why I can't see it. <laughs> Recommendation of the committee uh, from the special meeting of the 19th, which was this evening, and you'll see that on the screen. And I will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, and a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. <coughs> Councillor Hart, did you wish to speak? No. Deputy Lord Mayor? No, I was uh, Members? Uh, Councillor Martin? Mayor, I'm sorry, I was late for the meeting and I didn't get a copy of the plan, just this piece of paper. Is this it? Is this the strategic plan? Uh, CEO, did you wish to answer? It's three, Lord Mayor. It's a condensed version of the strategic plan for public consultation purposes. From that, we will receive feedback from the community in which we will shape the full plan. So, so it, it will be bigger than an A3 piece of paper when we finish? That's correct. Oh, good. I'm pleased it'll be a, a bigger vision. Thank you. <laughs> Members, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that's carried. Uh, that takes us to 9.4. Uh, members, this is the advice of the Parklands Authority. Um, there are four pieces of advice, and I will look to uh, move it on block unless there are any items that members wish to count, call out. Deputy Lord Mayor, are you moving on block? And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Members. Uh, are you going to call them out? It is advice one. I'm just looking for any speakers. Okay. So the advice of the Parklands Authority from the 14th of November. Advice one, ministerial lot 14 development plan amendment. Advice two, lot 14 uh, report pursuant to the Adelaide Parklands Act 2005. Advice three, Prospect Road Parklands entry improvements and tree removal. Councillor Martin, is that a question or did you wish to call that one out? I wish to call that one out. And advice for Rymel Park, uh, Merla Willapurka, Park 14, car park trial results. 
Yes, Councillor Martin. Uh, look, Lord Mayor, I, in respect of advice uh, three, um, and I accept that this is advice only, um, but I, I do wish to inquire because APLA has approved um, merely weeks after this council, my colleagues, um, approved the destruction of 11 substantial trees on North Terrace just weeks after that, Apple is agreeing to the removal of what appear to be 17 healthy trees on Prospect Road, where the Crows headquarters is proposed to go. Councillor Martin, that's actually uh, nothing to do with the Crows headquarters. That is actually the um, well, Prospect Road partners' entry. Lord Mayor, I'm just trying to identify the area and I'm saying to you that it's Prospect Road next to Park 2 where it's proposed the Crows headquarters go. And what I'm asking the administration is, will these trees be removed before the council has an opportunity to consider this advice from APLA or is that uh, in the parlance of done deal? Thanks, Shanti. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, there will be a report that comes into Council on this particular matter, so Council will have the opportunity to consider this um, proposition. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I'm happy with that. And in addition, there's to be a parking trial at Rye Mill Park. Will this too come to Council? That's advice for... I simply wanted to ask the question. CEO. Yes. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and for clarification, the um, Prospect Road Parklands Entry Improvements in Part 3 and 12 uh, and 2 were as per approved by Council about 12 to 18 months ago, um, which is the um, improvement for the entry. Um, A question, Lord Mayor. Were we specifically asked to approve the removal of no the that... removal of the trees is coming through separately but we did approve the master plan or the plan okay. for the entry statement of which uh, we've seen the proposal but not the numbers of trees thank you so members i will now ask uh, if anyone else wishes to speak to if not i will go to the vote for those four pieces of advice those in favor those against that is carried uh, members, that takes us to 9.4, which are the recommendations of the Special Tr Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee. Uh, 9.5, apologies. And I will look for a mover. Sorry, just a moment. This is the... Just a point, point of order, if that's OK. Uh, so, sorry, I'm just... Can I finish calling out the item? Yeah, I think there's a, a mistake there. Um, okay. Um, you've initially um, noted that you wanted to move on block all four items. There was a mover in the second of those items, all four of them. Um, why are we going for the vote? We didn't go for the vote on the first So two I items. did the four items of 9.4. I'm now on item 9.5. So we didn't vote for the first three. Yet we voted for all four. There were two questions from Councillor Martin. Oh, okay. So you're dealing with these questions because I, I thought you just asked now, can I get a mover? Uh, that's because I'm on 9.5. Okay. Uh, sorry, so we did, we did go to the vote. I will just check with governments to make sure that we did. Yeah, thank you. No, that's okay. And 9.4, and my apologies, I didn't have it in front of me. So we have recommendation one, which is the Ministerial Lot 14 Development Plan Amendment, and I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Second, Councillor Moran. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Moran. Members? If not, back to the mover. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. To the vote, those in favour? Those against, that's carried. And recommendation two, which is the historic area statements. I will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Sims. And a seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to it? Deputy Lord Mayor. Members? Not to the mover. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Sorry, 
Um, so that takes us to 9.6, which is a recommendation advice of the Special Audit Committee from the 18th of November, and I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Members, thank you, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to it? Right. Councillor Kerr? No. <laughs> Members? If not, back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Okay. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. So, thank you, members. That takes to the to my report. So, as we get to the middle of November, we are preparing for Christmas, but it also marks a full year. Uh, for the first full year of our council term, and it's probably a good time to reflect on what we have achieved so far. Um, 2019 has been a year of transition with uh, eight newly elected members. I'm never quite sure what to say there, Councillor Sims. One returning and seven newly elected members. This council has great diversity representing the full array of our City of Adelaide ratepayers, residents and visitors. New members bring new ideas about how we move our city forward to ensure we're providing infrastructure, services and city culture that the community will need and want in the years to come. As a capital city council, we're well aware that our decisions have an impact beyond the boundaries of the Adelaide Parklands. I want this term of council to be known for growing our economy, helping businesses to be sustainable and expand, assisting startups to scale and creating new jobs and increasing prosperity for strengthening our communities, um, amplifying what is great about our city lifestyle and growing our residential base, and also for creating a dynamic city culture which attracts more visitors to enjoy everything Adelaide has to offer. This council is not afraid of making bold decisions, it's decisions that are gonna set Adelaide up for a prosperous future for generations to come. Neither are we shying away from addressing the challenges our communities face, such as homelessness, universal access and inclusion, reconciliation and climate change. In the past 12 months, we've had many council meetings which have resulted in over 350 decisions. We're keeping costs low and reducing red tape. We've increased funding to end street homelessness in functional homelessness in Adelaide. Splash Adelaide has been reinstated with new purpose and we're funding master plans for our main streets. Collaboration and partnerships are part and parcel of effectively managing our city and by working together with the federal government and the state government, we also managed to secure the $500 million Adelaide City deal with under, underwrite significant investment in the city of Adelaide for the next decade. With this new term of council, we took carriage of several major once in a generation development and renewal projects. And as a team, ably supported by our dedicated and hardworking administration, we are progressing these, pro uh, these projects. As a group, we're working together to develop council's strategic plan for the next four years, an action plan we can unite behind to deliver for our city. I'm proud to be leading a, leading a council which is focusing on delivering exceptional outcomes for our ratepayers and residents, as well as creating the very best experiences for visitors, students and workers. The next three years will be all about delivering long-term outcomes for the City of Adelaide and building on what is already unique about our city as one of the world's most livable. Thank you, members. I'll ask that that report be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. And a second to thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Members, to vote those in favour. Thank you. That takes us to item 11 on the agenda, which is council uh, councillors' reports. And I look for a mover. Councillor Abraham today. And a seconder. Councillor Moran. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? To him? Uh, can I make a small adjustment? It's a correction. Uh, in attachment A, page 16. Uh, date is 21st of October 2019. The event is statewide super hub opening ceremony. Um, and the event details is that uh, I spoke and cut the ribbon at the opening ceremony. There was just attendance, no speaking, nor cutting. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. 
Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I, I also need to make a minor amendment. Um, on the 29th of October, it states that I attended the Adelaide Botanic High School meeting um, and I attended as a member of the board. It is true that I'm a member of the board. I couldn't attend the meeting and conflict it with a council meeting. So none no attendance. So, so Councillor Abrams, you did move the motion, yes? Yes, exactly. Uh, Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No. Uh, members, are there any other comments, amendments? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Uh, members, that takes us to item 12. Uh, Item 12.1, which is the Adelaide Parklands Authority Annual Report, and I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, Councillor Hyde. Uh, Council Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Mm -hmm. Councillor Hyde? Mm -hmm. Members? Councillor Martin? Yeah, look, just a, uh, a quick question for you, Lord Mayor. At um, page 25 in the introduction, you state, Parks are easily lost to the exigencies or convenience of governments and developers. But here in Adelaide, we have been eternally vigilant at a council and community level around the invaluable planning, heritage and community worth parklands represent. And I just wonder uh, if you could explain to us how your support for the Crows proposal for part two um, fits with that that description in your report? Councillor Martin, um, I am supporting an unsolicited bids process, uh, which we are, which is a council position and policy position, and we're working through that bids process at the moment. Well, look. Um, at this point, we have not received. Uh, a proposal from the Adelaide Crows, and when we do, we will put it out to consultation. May I speak, Lord Mayor? You may. Thank you. Uh, well, look, I uh, I can't accept this report uh, going out with those words. Um, it, the act of accepting a bid for parklands is not consistent with the words your words, parks are easily lost to the exigencies or convenience of governments and developers, because that's exactly what we're considering. We're considering as a council um, approving, and that's that's on the cards. Otherwise, there would be an unsolicited bid. We are considering approving an administrative headquarters, a business headquarters, and a drinking headquarters. Council. Councillor Martin. I said, Lord Mayor, I said we are considering that. that we haven't true. got anything for consideration at the moment. We're going through an unsolicited bids uh, process and we have not yet received a proposal. But that's, that's, that's irrelevant. What I'm saying, Lord Mayor, is that if you have taken the step of saying, I will consider positioning a business, an administration, and a commercial drinking headquarters on the parkland. Councillor, we haven't actually received a proposal. We do not know that there's a drink, what did you call it? A drinking headquarters in the proposal. Yes. Well, look, Unless yeah. you are privy to something that I have not seen, we have not yet received a proposal. There has no deal been done. When the proposal comes in, the council will assess the proposal and it will go out to consultation. And, and it is for all South Australians to decide whether they wish for us to proceed. And how is that going to happen, Lord Mayor? Through consultation, Councillor Martin. Well, look, Lord Mayor, my point is simply that if you have put yourself in a position where you will consider a proposal, and that is our position at the moment, then you also put yourself in a position where you will either accept or reject it. And that is the only point that I've made. And my problem is that the words Parks are easily lost to the exigencies or convenience of... So are you making an amendment to this, Councillor Martin? No, Lord Mayor, I'm saying that uh, I won't be supporting this report because of those words. But if someone were to um, move that those words be removed, then uh, I would naturally vote for it. I don't think they can because this is the report from the Parklands Authority and the Parklands Authority have approved it. This is receiving the Parklands Authority's annual report. 
I am, I it is to receive the annual, the annual report of the Parklands Authority that has been adopted by the Parklands Authority at its meeting of the 24th of October. Okay, so we can't, we can't amend it. it, is, it is it not possible for this council to amend any advice it receives from APLA? This is not advice. This is a report that has been adopted by APLA and we are receiving the report. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Members? Councillor Moran. I just want to um, uh, highlight that again. I, I think, I, I know what uh, Councillor Martin's saying, but I think it's better that it's in the report because I agree that it is ironic, uh, very ironic. Um, many of the um, non independents have, have stated quite clearly that if this contact, uh, development contains sporting facilities, they do not see why it cannot be. So we are going to get the crows at the Aquatic Centre in some shape or form. Councillor Moran, the decision but has not been made. No, we no, have no, not no. yet received a proposal. So well, we've, we've, unless you have seen something that I am not privy to, then we have not received a proposal. No, no, I take your point, but we are we have received an unsolicited bid, which is a form of proposal, and we are looking at it seriously, and my, some of us did not want to receive it. Um, so I think that it's a, I, I would disagree with Councillor Martin. I think this should stay in here because if you take it out, then it's giving a clear freedom to not to not do this. That's a noble intention that the Lord Mayor said. I'm not sure that reality has checked, it has completely shown us that that's the way forward um, in the future. And I doubt very much whether a no vote will be given. But, but and, and in fact, tonight we can see we can see about, about three motions tonight, the way this council will proceed with the Crows. Thank plans. you, Councillor Moran. Members. If not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Sum up, Lord Mayor, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, members to the vote, those in favour of receiving the report, thank you. Those against, that is carried. That takes us to 12.2, which is the position of the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, there's two, there's procedural. So first I'll actually ask for the procedural and then we'll go to nominations. So procedural, sorry, there's hands over it, Councillor Moran. And a seconder, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran. Uh, oh, procedural. Uh, just a quick question, Lord Mayor. There's a procedural listed is there to be an opportunity to speak in favour of any nominations that follow, or is it appropriate to speak now? No, it's not appropriate to speak now. This is a procedural. I'll then call for nominations. And will it be possible for people to speak to nominations? I think so. I don't know that we actually speak to nominations, but we will certainly call to nominations. But this is a procedural to approve the appointment of the Lord, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. But you will allow people to speak in favour of No, I don't believe so. I do. We will call for nominations and then accept the nominations and then we'll go to vote. That would be normal procedure. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Are you seconding the uh, procedural? Uh, I think so, yes. Okay. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Moran to sum up. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. I will now look to the floor for uh, nominations. And I have Councillor Moran, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Knoll, and Councillor Martin. Uh, Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I was going to nominate, but I hear that there are other people that um, are keen, and I have done one, t one term as Deputy Lord Mayor, so I think one's enough. Um, and you shouldn't repeat your term. So I would like to nominate Councillor Sims, Councillor Ho, and Councillor um, Kiera and Councillor um, Hyde. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims, do you accept the nomination? I do, Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde, do you accept the nomination? I do not. Thank you. Councillor Kerry, do you accept the nomination? I don't, Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde, do you accept the nomination? I don't, Lord Mayor, and I'd like to nominate someone else. Thank you. I will go now to Councillor Hi, uh, Councillor Hyde. It's my pleasure to nominate the current Deputy Lord Mayor, oh, Councillor Albert. Oh, yeah, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Albert, do you accept the nomination? It's been great to serve Lord Mayor, but I will not continue. <laughs> so you were not accepting the nomination? No. Declining the nomination. I will now go to Councillor Connell. I don't know 
moment's appropriate, Miller, because I was moving in an amendment to the oh. motion. Just a moment. No, you're you're procedural. And it's just a, an amendment of the dates. So that I think it's too late. You might be able to do it as motion without notice when we get to motions. Um, sorry, I'm just a moment. We'll do it in motions without notice if you want to go there. Um, I had Councillor Canole, Councillor Martin, you had your hand up. Um, look, everyone's declining the nomination. Um, did count, any, someone nominated Councillor Sims and Councillor Hyde? Even if I ask you to? <laughs> and the, the Deputy Lord Mayor, no? Councillor Martin, are you making a nomination? I am, but if they're going to be rejected, the only one who wants it is Councillor Sims. Ready to serve. Deputy Lord Mayor. I will nominate Councillor Hyde. Councillor Hyde, go back to Councillor Hyde. We accept the nomination. Current Deputy Lord Mayor is, is refusing, and I'll accept the nomination. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. So I have two com uh, nominations, which is Councillor Sims and Councillor Hyde. Are there any further nominations from the floor? If not, because we have two nominations, we'll go to the vote and um, it will be a ballot. Sorry, Lord Mayor, to, given there's remuneration involved in this, to Councillor Sims and I have to step out? Not until after the ballot. Okay. And I will ask you to leave once we yep. get through the ballot. So council members, you're marking one name only. It's either Councillor Sims or Councillor Hyde. Uh, so, members, the successful uh, nominee is Councillor Hyde. Hey. 
So I will ask Councillor, I don't know who that was. Me. <laughs> Madam, you, uh, if, if I will actually need you to be quiet in the uh, gallery. If not, I'll ask you to leave the chamber. Um, Councillor Hyde, I'll ask you to leave the chamber, please, while we go to the vote. So members will go to the vote. Uh, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Oh, so, uh, my apologies. I need a mover. Uh, that as per the, um, yeah, so moved by Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded. Thank you, Councillor Aberdeen today. Members, if not, go to, uh, back to Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Um, congratulations, Councillor Hyde. You'll be our next and uh, youngest, I believe, Deputy Lord Mayor for the City of Adelaide. Congratulations. Um, members, at this juncture, I'm going to take a short five minute break. Um, and uh, we will come back to a comfort stop. Thank you.
We've got a quorum, we might so uh, continue. Uh, members, we will go to um, yeah, where are we up to? 12.3. Um, just before I go to 12.3, um, because that moved pretty quickly, um, I'd just like to um, thank uh, Councillor Abiat for being my Deputy Lord Mayor for my first year of being Lord Mayor. It's been a bit of a uh, um, an interesting ride, shall we say, but I've really, really appreciated your support and your friendship, and uh, um, thank you very much. For being my deputy and last year. Thank you. We will go to 12.3. So the first one's a procedural, which is to prove the nomination of a council member or staff member to the State Records Council. So I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Sims. And a second to Councillor Hyde. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to it? Oh, it's a procedural. Um, uh, to Councillor Sims to sum up. Yep. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, now I will look for nominations to the floor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Nominate Councillor Donovan, although I know she's absent today, but I think she accepted or nominated to staff. Um, Councillor Donovan has expressed interest in, uh, in an email previously. I look to the floor. Are there any other nominations? No. If, uh, if not, we'll thanks. So, okay, so we'll just um, need a mover and a second to appoint Councillor Donovan in her absence. Uh, Councillor Knoll and a second to Councillor Kouros. Um, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. And we will congratulate <coughs> Councillor Donovan on her return. Um, uh, we will go to 12.3, uh, no, 12.4, I'm sorry, the 2019 Review of Confidentiality Orders. Uh, members, there's a small amendment, as you can see on the screen, um, in point two, which is to approve, to extend the operations, uh, the operation of 33 confidentiality orders in full and seven in part. I uh, will look to the floor for a mover. What is seven? Um, I can't answer that. Do you know what's seven up? Sorry, thank you, CEO. Through the Lord Mayor, Rudy has that answer. Thanks, Rudy. Through the Lord Mayor, when you refer to the attachments, those seven are included in there, so the recommendation was incorrectly worded before, therefore um, the alternate wording has been provided there on the, on the screen. So there's 33 uh, in full and seven in part are all incorporated. Um, and clarified in the attachment provided. Um, so these are, if, if you wish me to run through those, I can actually read them out. No? no I'm happy. I thought you were talking about an additional seven. Uh, members, I'll look for a mover from the floor. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, uh, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that takes us to 12.5, which is the Council of Capital City Lord Mayor's update. Look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde and the seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members, any comments? Reports from noting. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Oh, I just wanted to say congratulations, uh, Lord Mayor, on your uh, climate change arrangements and uh, for voting to uh, according to the minutes of uh, the last meeting, um, to develop the Australian Mayor's Statement, which highlights the work of City's climate action and seeks stronger emission reduction targets and action. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, members, any other speakers? If not, back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to questions on notice. 
uh, Councillor Sims, question on notice, atmospheric lighting. Thanks, Lord Mayor. What is the status of the report I initiated on options for atmospheric lighting for O'Connell Street and Melbourne Street? Would you like me to read the reply, Councillor? And no, I'll take it as read. Take it as read, thank you. That takes us to uh, question 13.2, Councillor Sims. Tree Could plant. administration please provide an update on the progress of tree planting targets as outlined in the 2016 to 20 strategic plan, as well as update on the targets outlined in the approved Green City Plan? In particular, what is the status of the greening promise for residential areas in the west end of the city? Uh, thank you, Councillor Sims. Can I take the answer as read? Yes, please. thank you. Okay. I have Councillor Martin, 13.3, Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Um, uh, yes, Lord Mayor, look, um, I'm happy uh, to have the question uh, accepted as printed, but the answer is not available to members of the gallery. Um, is it possible um, for you to read that? Is it too long? Uh, I can read that. I'm happy Thank to you. read that. Or we could have it circulated if that's... Oh, well, if you're pre prepared to circulate it to members of the gallery, then I'm happy with that. And it will also be in the minutes, so we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to 13.4, which uh, Councillor Martin, Central Market Arcade. Um, again, look, it's only short, or maybe you might screen that. Or is that... Did you wish to wish read your question? Or are you just happy for me to read the response? Well, if the uh, response is being circulated at this time to members of the gallery, I'm happy with that as well. Uh, one moment, I'll just... Yes, we can do that. Thank you, I'll accept that. Uh, members, that takes us to questions without notice. Um, go to motions on notice. Uh, the first motion on notice, Councillor Sims, 15.1. Thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. I'll try and keep this brief. Um, I move that Council amend the unsolicited proposals guideline to exclude its application to the Adelaide Parklands as defined by the Adelaide Parklands Act of 2005. And two, request that administration conduct a review of the other aspects of the guide, guideline that includes an elected member workshop and engagement with other stakeholders. Thank you, Councillor Moran has seconded your motion. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, as I say, I will try and keep this brief. I know we've got a few motions to um, get through tonight. That's what happens when we reduce the number of meetings. And um, we do tend to have a fairly full agenda, but I will try and um, be fairly brief. Um, Lord Mayor, this um, comes uh, as a result of the discussion that we had at committee some time ago. Um, there seemed to be general uh, consensus um, at uh, that meeting um, that the unsolicited bids process has not um, been successful. Um, indeed, former Deputy Lord Mayor Abiad um, made the point that um, the uh, point of order still current. Oh, come on, are you going to kill me already? Getting ahead quick. of myself. Don't Getting please. ahead of myself. Apologies. Um, the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor um, made that um, point um, in a committee that he thought that uh, the parklands should never have been um, part of the unsolicited proposals guideline, or indeed that that was not what was envisaged. I wasn't at council at that time, Lord Mayor, so I wasn't part of those discussions. Um, but if uh, that's what uh, Deputy um, Lord Mayor Abiad says occurred, then um, I accept that explanation. Whatever the intention, it is very clear to me that this has not worked for our public space. The nature of the unsolicited bids process is that it requires these discussions to happen in confidence in order to uh, preserve the um, commercial incompetence of projects um, and the intellectual property um, of the proponents. And I don't think that that is appropriate when we're dealing with public land, when there is a clear public interest in um, that land. And so that's why I'm proposing that going forward, we exclude the um, parklands from the unsolicited proposals guideline so that it's very clear that if you want to uh, put a proposal forward for the parklands, you have to come to council and council will work through the process rather than 
um, there being a cloak of secrecy around um, the uh, proposal. I'm, when I uh, discussed this uh, idea through the media, um, I gleaned from my colleagues' comments that there were some other concerns about the unsolicited bids process um, and uh, some members are wanting to have a review. So I've included that as a part two. But my suggestion, Lord Mayor, is that we should uh, make sure that we get rid of um, the unsolicited proposals process for the parklands, make that decision tonight, and then commit to review the other aspects. We've seen, of course, the complete fiasco that has unfolded around the crows, the huge discomfort that that has created in the community. And a lot of that discomfort has been about the clandestine nature of the process. There is an opportunity for this council to form a strong position tonight and to say, going forward, we are never going to subject our community to that kind of process again. And I urge members to back this motion and to take a strong position. Councillor Sims, Councillor Moran. Uh, just, just briefly, um, I guess we're referring to the uh, Aquatic Centre um, situation. Um, when we were asked to form a um, uh, this sort of process, we were all a little bit surprised because there didn't seem to be any in the pipeline. There turned out to be one in the pipeline. Um, but um, we've always managed on the council before or there was one very soon in the pipeline anyway, uh, and that has not worked well. I don't think anybody in this room would say that it's been a good process, uh, whatever faction you are in or not in. Um, it has not been, it has constrained us, it's tied our hands behind our back, it's excluded our public for something that there is their own land, blah, 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 blah. The Lord Mayor said that she wished it, that, that she agreed it shouldn't apply for the park lands. I know this is going to go down because we are voting in a fashionable way in this council. And I, you can huff and puff all you like, but that is what's going to happen. And it's disappointing because the unsolicited bid proposal got, uh, was unnecessary. I've been on the council, we've, we've received many an unsolicited bid. An unsolicited bid is when somebody comes and says, I've got a really good idea, da, 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 da. And there was never a need for this sort of restrictive, confident, confidential type of process. And I think that some of us said that at the time, what, what, what's this for? We, we, we're allowed to um, entertain um, a proposal when it's a unique single proposal. We didn't need any guidelines. And now it's bit us, bit us in the uh, proverbial badly. Um, this, I don't think that the um, Aquatic Centre was an unsolicited bid. I moved a motion that we approach uh, the YMCA, uh, several other bodies to look at managing our, our Aquatic Centre, which we were not happy to continue doing because of the enormous cost to our ratepayers and the fact that our ratepayers weren't using it. Um, but I never envisaged that it would turn into this monster. Um, so A, it wasn't unsolicited. We solicited it. At B, it's not unique. There are plenty so of point sports. of order, Councillor Moran. We didn't solicit it. Uh, uh, with all due respect, um, Lord Mayor, I moved the motion that solicited it. Uh, maybe you went on council. Maybe it's when Rob was on council. But I moved a motion that we approach the Adelaide Football Club, who was looking for a new home and wanted to sell. And I said, let's see, rather jokingly, as some would remember, let's see if the Crows are dumb enough to take over the management of our aquatic centre. And they said yes. Well, they said no, they wanted our um, nursery. So we said, no, 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 you can't have the nursery, but you can't Council take over the management. Three, well, being conscious for my confidentiality requirements. Wasn't confidential when we moved that motion. Sorry, I'm well aware. We moved a motion in open council that we asked for other bodies to manage our aquatic centre. And that is out in the public arena. Thank you. I don't need to be reminded about things like that. Thank you. Um, so uh, this is not an unsolicited bid and it is not a unique bid. Um, and I think we should tidy up our, do our homework and get, and get this back to get this off the parklands where it's caused this council, as the Lord Mayor summed up saying it's been difficult, it's been difficult because of this process. I'm sure the Lord Mayor would love to have gone back in time and say, let's not let it apply to the parklands. So let's fix it up now. Councillor Martin. Um, 
Uh, look, um, I, uh, I join uh, uh, Councillor Sims in being optimistic that the team, sorry, my colleagues, will support this because the Deputy Lord Mayor has himself said that parklands shouldn't be part of this unsolicited bid process. I do remember that, uh, and that's what fills me with confidence. I just say to uh, my colleagues, that's all of them, the team and everyone else, um, that if you support this motion, the administration, it says very clearly at four, will undertake a full review of the unsolicited proposals guidelines uh, that includes an elected member workshop and stakeholder engagement. Uh, and then it goes on to say that it's part of the annual review of delegation. So what you're actually going to agree to is a workshop and a discussion, and that is a reasonable thing to ask, given the stink that's been associated with this bid. And let me tell you, I was, uh, uh, along with the Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Moran, part of the council that considered this policy of unsolicited bids. Um, and it was puzzling at the time. I, I do remember a conversation with Councillor Moran along the lines of what the hell is this all about? But what I, what I also remember very clearly is there was never any discussion of this applying to the parklands, and particularly not in the fashion that the Crows bid for part two is uh, unfolding. In fact, um, I, you know, I just, I can't conceive of how that would have been on the agenda. It was more for commercial propositions. That was my understanding for commercial propositions within the city and on council property, not on the property of the people of South Australia, not on the parklands. So uh, look, I, I urge everyone to support this. This uh, will not undo the damage that's been done by the unsolicited bid that the Adelaide Football Club, or well, actually it's the AFL that's lodged uh, through its Adelaide franchise. Um, it will not undo that damage, uh, but it will help to ensure that that doesn't happen again. Please support it. Members, take a note, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I agree with most of the sentiments said here today, um, but uh, to Councillor Martin's point, if this is exactly the intention, then let it be the intention. I think it's important, and we've raised this in Council, that this is probably the first um, time we've accepted an unsolicited bid process through this model. Um, and if we want to talk about this as being a uh, zero start, where we've attempted something and we've taken this on board, I think it's really important we review the policy. And I, I agree with you, Councillor Sims. But this is not what Councillor Martin said. What this reads is to amend on the fly the unsolicited bid process tonight. It says it here, uh, and if you're prepared, uh, it, it amends the unsolicited proposal guidelines to exclude applications to the Adelaide Parklands as defined by the Adelaide Parklands Act 2005. Uh, this is not um, this is not talking to what Councillor Martin has mentioned, which goes to a workshop. The workshop this, second part. Councillor, I'm not asking you the question. I'm telling you what this motion reads and what I understand of it. Councillor Sims, let him speak and then we can... This says to amend the current unsolicited bid process guidelines. I think they need to be reviewed. I don't know what this will capture. There might be an opportunity there for people from the community to still apply to do something in the parkland that doesn't have a commercial nature, that doesn't have in mind commercial profit, that might have in mind community projects that we need to consider, and your motion will exclude them from that process. I am saying, let's go to committee and review this process to understand the length of the impact this would have. I'm happy to do that. And with that, I'll flag an amendment, Lord Mayor, that I will delete part one, and the amendment would read that council requests for administration to bring the unsolicited proposal guideline to a workshop for review. That's what I would like to see for us to have the opportunity to be able to unpack this, just like Councillor Martin mentioned before, at a workshop level to understand the impact of our decision and move down that path. But I've moved that, so I'd ask for a seconder, if that's okay. Uh, just make sure we, we capture the words. Thank you. referring to part lands. You're referring to parklands as fine. Happy to include that one. Request the administration to bring, well, to be honest with you, I, I want the whole unsolicited bid process unfolded, including the parklands uh, bit of it. Oh, no, I'm suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Has that captured your amendment, Deputy yes. Lord Mayor? So we've got a second of it. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Thank you. Look, just briefly speaking to this, I, I agree 
Um, there are unexpected things that have occurred along the way that we need to consider, um, including the length of time that a proponent potentially may take through unsolicited bid process. Um, these are the things that the, uh, that the current guidelines are silent on. Um, and these are the things that we need to be able to unfold and unpack to improve. So we're able to, I guess, be transparent in the community. The reason this has become, uh, just briefly, Lord Mayor, uh, the reason this has become a bit of a mess and a shamble is because it's been a bit of a political football uh, around ideology. This is not specific factions. There are people in this council, and I respect them, that believe where the current concrete jungle of an aquatic centre is built that restricts public access without a fee is considered parkland and they don't want anything built on that and that is fair i'm happy to accept that position and respect it and there is and there are groups of people that would also say well look let's see what we can do to reduce expenses to reduce costs and still deliver on an improved community service etc etc uh, the, this is where the debate is. This is not a factional debate of team this and team that. This is literally a debate around ideology where what people we would like to see happen on that side versus this is not a greenfield. This is not parkland where there's trees on that side. This is not a greenfield. This is a concrete jungle that is currently costing council a significant amount of money to only cater for 9% of rate pays in the city of Adelaide. I do agree that the unsolicited bid process needs review, but the unsolicited bid process may also bring a positive outcome as a result or a negative outcome. That will be a matter for council to evaluate and the community to do so as part of the consultation process. Thank you, David, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Connell, did you wish to speak? Uh, members, yeah. Councillor Sims. Thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm disappointed to um, see this uh, amendment, which really dilutes the whole purpose of um, the motion. Um, yes, we can have a workshop, which we know is code on this council for doing not much at all, or we can actually take a strong uh, position on this. And we have already talked about this. We talked about it at length at committee. And uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor said at uh, that committee, oh, this was never what was intended and uh, the parklands shouldn't be part of um, the unsolicited bids process. Well, all I'm proposing tonight is that we amend the proposals guideline so that it's clear going forward that the parklands aren't part of the process. So we don't have private corporations bidding for our public land behind closed doors. That's all I'm proposing. And then I'm suggesting that we have a workshop to address the other issues. Now, this is a situation where members of council can actually have their cake and eat it too. They can form a strong policy position and they can also support a broader review on the other elements. And, you know, I was really intrigued to read the article in In Daily um, recently, Lord Mayor, as I often am, um, and this particular piece um, included some comments from Councillor um, Abra Himsida regarding the call to review the policy allowing the Crows Parklands HQ. He said, what we've done with the Crows, some of those discussions and consultations should have been done differently. The way I see it is what we ended up doing, the way we carried out our discussion should have been better, more transparent and more public. I couldn't agree more, Lord Mayor, with that statement. What I'm offering tonight is the council an opportunity to do things differently going forward. And I urge members not to squib on this opportunity. This isn't about left or right politics. It's actually about looking out for the best interests of our community. And it's about ensuring that we have a process that suits our community when it comes to discussing public land. And quite frankly, a meaningless workshop as a standalone response is not going to cut it. This is a test for all of you, and I say this through you, Lord Mayor, this is a test for all of the members on this council about where they stand on the parklands. Many campaigned during the election, and you know, I remember being at a forum with Councillor Moran, and Councillor Moran made the very sensible point, don't listen to what they say during the election, look at how they vote, look at what they do when they're actually in the council chamber. Well, the day of reckoning is here and it is time for you to show some leadership and stop squibbing on these decisions and stop pushing it off into the never never for more and more meaningless workshops. Councillor Abraham Thank you, Lord Mayor. 
Hello, Mayor. I don't know what Councillor Sims does in workshops, but uh, we all definitely come in there with our thinking caps on and we do contribute. So uh, uh, to say that it's a useless workshop, uh, I'm not sure um, uh, what sort of attitude you bring to, uh, to our workshop, Councillor Sims. Um, uh, to, to provide further clarification, Lord Mayor, I would just like to say that um, those comments are right. Yes, I am on public record saying that the current uh, guidelines do need, to be, do need to be worked, and I believe that this amendment here will do that. It's like looking at a, a big great wall and you see holes everywhere, all over the wall. What you're, what you're doing is going up to one little hole, patching it up, putting a little band-aid on it, walking away saying that it's all good. Councillor not, not realising that the entire wall is fractured and the entire thing needs to be rebuilt. And I believe this, uh, this amendment here will do that. Thank you, Councillor yeah, Hyde. Councillor Hyde. Oh, sorry, Councillor Martin, I'll come to you oh, No, 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 I just have a question first. Uh, yes. After this workshop, um, feedback given to the administration on the guidelines, that would then be worked into a recommendation, brought back to committee and then to council? Normally that is the way, is Councillor. That, that's 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 normally, yes, that's the case. We would workshop, we would get feedback, we would draft a report that would go to committee and then come to council. What sort of timeline do you envisage that would have? Depending on what the, um, what the conversation led to with council members, um, if it required research and, and further investigation to be undertaken, it may take some time. Um, but if it's, if it's fairly straightforward as by way of the conversation, it could be undertaken in a number of months. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I'm also disappointed um, and uh, I don't agree with uh, Councillor Abraham, but given that it's his wedding this week, I'll, uh, I'll accept what he's saying. Um, what does concern me is the statement of ideology that the Deputy Lord Mayor made, because this is the thing that slides through every time, and it's the key point in all of this. He talks about the possibility of consultation and about the position of others. The position of all right-thinking people, not extremists, as uh, one of my colleagues uh, called them the other day in the media, the position of all right people uh, is that the legislation, the parklands legislation of 2005 says that the parklands are held by the council and by the state government in trust on behalf of the people of South Australia. It is the position of all right-thinking people that if the council decides to change that so that it will accept commercial development, which is not contemplated in the legislation at all, then it should go to the people to comment. The position, the ideology of the Deputy Lord Mayor is, we've already leapt over that. The faction has decided that it is acceptable to have commercial development on the park. Councillor Martin, there hasn't been any decision made. I'm saying to you, Lord Mayor, if you accept, and this is the point you don't seem to grasp that I keep putting, the point is, if you accept that you will consider a bid for commercial development on the parklands, you've already gone there. You've already said, I am prepared to consider whether this commercial development is a good idea or not. You have leapt over that huge, huge chasm that says, we need to ask people, the people of South Australia, whether the parklands are available for commercial development. And I have not the slightest doubt that the people of South Australia will say to you, you are wrong. This is fundamentally wrong. The parklands are not there for commercial development. And to say so, to put that ideology as is being put here and cloak it in some sort of justification that there's already concrete there and a bit more concrete for the crows is not going to matter is a wild misstatement of what's being proposed. What's being proposed is a commercial development that alienates the parklands forever. It is unacceptable. Um, Councillor Ma um, Gallery, I'm sorry, but um, if I can ask you to be quiet in the gallery, please. Um, 
Councillor Martin, I actually think there are two points, if I, if I um, can respond to that. And one is that in 1969, the council did make a decision to put a commercial development on the parklands, which is called the Aquatic Centre. It was there as a revenue generator, it was there as a commercial operation, and it was put in the parklands. And the second point is that you said we should go. Well, we will be going to the people of South Australia and asking them what they think, but we haven't yet received a proposal. And when we receive the proposal, we will go to the people of South Australia and ask them what they think. And at all times, as part of the unsolicited bids process, we can actually say no. And we know that. And we will... Excuse me. Excuse me. Madam, I will ask you to leave the chamber, please. Now, thank you. Can I ask you please to leave the chamber? Thank you. Run by the council, yeah, that's 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 Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, that is not correct. Moran, it is a commercial operation, and we actually get our reports as commercial operations, just as our U parks are a commercial operation, and just as the Adelaide Town Hall is a commercial operation. The excuse me, I am speaking. Thank you, members. Just as I listen to you speak, you can actually give me the courtesy of letting me speak. It is a commercial operation. We get our reports, our financial reports about our commercial operations, just as our U parks are commercial operations, and it is in the parklands. We know it is failing as a commercial operation. We are in the middle of an unsolicited bids process. When we receive any proposal, we will go out to consultation. And yes, the people of South Australia will decide and give us feedback on that consultation. Now, I will go back to the may chamber. May I ask a question of you, Lord Mayor? You may ask a question, Councillor Martin. And it, it, you, you are saying to me, that you will ask the people of South Australia if they like the Crows development, that is, if they like a commercial development on the park. We will take the proposal when we receive it to consultation, which has always been part of the unsolicited bids process and always been an undertaking by this council that we will go to consultation. But Lord Mayor, won't you support a proposal to ask people if they want commercial development on the park? We haven't got a commercial development proposal before us. We haven't. We haven't. Unless you have received it, I have not received it. We have not received a proposal. Members, we're going to move on. I will actually ask uh, if anybody else would like to speak to it, and if not, I will. You may ask a question, Councillor Moran. In your statement, um, I'd like to ask a question. Do you see any? Do you see that a public commercial operation, such as an aquatic centre, a library, um, a town hall? is exactly the same as a private company's commercial operation. The, the, is that what you're The library is not a commercial operation. Okay, leave out the library. Are the you library. telling me you see no difference in what we run as commercial operations on the parklands and a private business company? We will wait and see what the proposal is. We've we haven't, seen, we the haven't seen the proposal, we, Councillor Moran. We do not have it. Councillor Knoll. I mean, I can appreciate uh, the great emotion everywhere, and but I think if you if we look at it, first of all, this is about let's re reassess it because obviously it, it hasn't functioned the way we were expecting it. So let's do that. The other side is we uh, we have set pe people have come uh, 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 along in this process um, uh, under the, well understanding what they see uh, is the process. So it is only fair allow them under the process of which they started to initiate. This is action. Let them do that. I mean, uh, the imperfection is belongs with the previous workshops and the previous councillors uh, who, who looked at this and uh, passed it and, and made it, you know, uh, something a process by which people can uh, bring forward to council. So, you know, uh, we can't undo that. So let us look at this in the future. Let us allow this, uh, uh, you know, the crows to come along with what they bring. And end of the day, it's exactly that. We don't have anything. It's designed that way. Sadly, I mean, uh, uh, all of the, uh, you know, this has all been uh, brought out in a way and made such a simple argument um, about whether you were like a football team or not. Uh, and it's not about that. And we put in guidelines, and these guidelines we put in 
uh, are about how people uh, come with an idea, and it is any idea. I mean, if, if we stifle ourselves without allowing some bit of uh, uh, width, uh, then we are not going to develop this no, uh, and, and even uh, pushing away almost anything. I mean, the, the central market is, is on community land. Um, that is there and that people want that sort of space to be there. It's, it, you know, I mean, there are different functions for different uh, parts of the community space. Now, like I say, they have come along on a process that we've initiated. Uh, I give them the courtesy to, uh, you know, to do that. Let them bring it forward. Let the, uh, uh, the public, and it's not just us, because we are custodians of the parklands and pay for most of it um, for all of uh, South, all South Australians. And let's face it, the Aquatic Centre mostly is used by other uh, people living in other suburbs, etc. So we are doing lots of things for a greater good. Uh, let us look at all of those things, and then that, let the let the whole community. Because if we're going to talk about the whole community, let's not talk about uh, our own residents, because we do so many things here for all of the city um, and also South Australia. So, I mean, if that's going to be a South Australian thing, then at least uh, uh, let them have a good look at it and see what they wish to have out of it. And there'll be uh, sufficient comments, but broad comments from all varieties of people and not very, very narrow uh, uh, in a group of people. Thank you, Councillor Canal. I've got Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you for providing clarity um, with those comments earlier. I think that greatly assisted my understanding of what's happened previously. Um, uh, I will flag that I do believe there are some serious deficiencies with the unsolicited uh, proposals guideline. Um, and I will also flag that my feedback will be to carve out the parklands in one form or another if this is successful during That's the right. workshop. Um, uh, however, I do, I, do, I do think we're sort of taking a sledgehammer to that. I mean, um, for example, if, if uh, one of my community groups came and said, uh, we want to have a community garden in the parklands or something like that, um, uh, and they were going to sell things to a market garden or something like that, does that then come about that sort of thing? Thanks. You know, there, there are, I don't want to take a sledgehammer to it altogether. I would like to carve out a certain class of uh, unsolicited proposals. Um, similarly, uh, you could also put in there that, uh, and this may be worked on the workshop, you could also put in there that, um, uh, yes, you can uh, submit something for the parklands, but it's public from the beginning. Um, uh, that also may, may be another way to get around um, these issues that we've had. Um, and the issues that we have, um, uh, 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 because this is the first time this process has been initiated, um, and it is unfortunate it's folded out, it's unfolded this way, there are motions later today which will deal with that um, and, and push the process along as it desperately needs. Because while, while we talk about these clandestine meetings and what have you, I mean, I think we've only had a couple. Um, and in that, there's such little detail. Um, uh, myself, I as a councillor, I'm flying blind when it comes to this. You all are because you haven't seen anything. Um, there has been such little detail. It is so insignificant. It's not even worth putting out to consultation. Um, uh, and we'll come to that later today. But, uh, and so for me, myself, I feel like this process needs to be amended so that we are better informed from the beginning uh, as well. Um, uh, so I'll support this amendment if it fails. I'll support the emotion as uh, the original motion as it was, um, and I've already foreshadowed the uh, kind of feedback that I'll be bringing to the workshop. Thank you, members. If not, I'll go back to the deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. I'll be brief. I think we've had a lot of discussion around this, but uh, look, what we're asking for here, and some of us have spoken for and um, against and outside the realm of what's been proposed. All we're asking for is for a workshop to go through this, unpack it properly and be able to do with it properly so we can establish something that we are comfortable with as a council to deal with. I'm not going to be responding to councillors' remarks with regards to the current recording centre and all of that because I, it's not part of what we're voting on. What we are voting on is do we want to review the process and the sentiment across everyone in the room is yes, we want. So I'd ask members to support this and let us review the process properly. Thank you, members. If we go to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Division. Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise. Remain standing until all names have been called. Thanks. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Councillor Carer, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kouras. Thank you, members. That takes us to 15.2, Councillor Sims. 
Yeah, I think, sorry, I think that we still need to vote on this. Oh, sorry, that becomes a substantive. You're correct, Councillor Sims. Back to you. Thank you. Uh, look, I am disappointed that we didn't um, form a, a strong, take a strong position on this tonight. We could have saved ourselves um, and the community, more importantly, a lot of worry by actually saying, going forward, from this point on, we're not going to um, subject the community to the botched Cladestine process that we've had with the Crows, that we're going to instead uh, adopt a different process. I am concerned, um, Lord Mayor, based on some of the comments that some of the councillors maybe don't understand what an unsolicited uh, bid is, um, or even understand what um, the uh, proposals guideline relates to. So I hope before they attend the workshop, they read the guideline and um, understand what is uh, in its remit and um, what isn't. Um, I'm happy to support this uh, as a substantive because obviously a review is um, better than nothing. Um, but I am disappointed that we haven't taken a strong position tonight. The council has once again failed leadership when it comes to the park lands. And I do fear that, you know, um, according to some on this council, the park lands are open for business. Members will go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to 15.2, Councillor Sims. I'm back, Lord Mayor. And again, on the um, parklands, I move that Council notes that the State Government has released a draft planning and design code for public, uh, for public consultation. Two supports the retention of the following statement from the existing Adelaide City uh, Council development plan in the new code. And I refer um, you, Lord Mayor, to what is printed proposes the replacement of the above with the following statement of the Draft Planning and Design Code. Um, development at the Adelaide Aquatic Centre to consolidate and replace existing buildings and note the change from AND to WIS, recreational sporting club rooms, facilities and associated administrative functions. And for request administration, prepare a submission on the Draft Planning and Design Code reflecting this position. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I look for a seconder. Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, the uh, genesis for this motion is um, a, uh, uh, members may be familiar with a news article that um, ran uh, recently um, in the advertiser, I believe, which was looking um, at uh, concerns about the change um, from uh, the new code, uh, to, uh, from the old code um, to the new code. And one uh, issue that um, was identified uh, in that article by Parkland's advocates was the inclusion of an unusual um, phrase in the uh, new code, Lord Mayor. That is the inclusion of the phrase development at the Adelaide Aquatic Centre to consolidate and replace existing buildings with recreational sporting club rooms, facilities and associated administrative functions. Now, I wonder what that could be referring to, Lord Mayor. I wonder what that might be uh, about. I wonder what that particular um, phrase might be referring to, recreational sporting club rooms, facilities and associated administrative functions. You don't have to uh, be a detective to work that one out, Lord Mayor. It's very prescriptive and it is a, a significant change from what is within the existing guideline. Because within our existing um, code or development plan, we reference, um, or there's this phrase, extensions or new buildings at the Adelaide Aquatic Centre should be restricted unless they consolidate and replace existing buildings with structures more appropriate to the parklands environment and with no increase in the total floor plan. Other than this, no additional buildings should be permitted. Well, the government's proposing striking that out and replacing it with this new phrase, referencing recreational sporting club rooms, facilities and associated functions. Now, understandably, there's been some anxiety within the community around this. I know many on this council have been quick to say I've got nothing to do with the Crows proposal. Well, if that is the case, Lord Mayor, then the proof will be in the pudding tonight, because I would expect if that is the case, that this motion will be endorsed unanimously. Council will adopt a strong position and we will take that to the government and say, no, we don't want you to change the code to facilitate a corporate takeover of our public land. Now, once again, Lord Mayor, this is a test for all elected members. This is a test for all elected members. Are they going to stand with the community 
and fight for public land, or will they side with vested interests as they did just a moment ago on my previous motion? The choice is theirs, Lord Mayor, um, and I hope on this motion they make the right choice. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin? Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. And I thank uh, Councillor Sims for this. I, I am aware of the anxiety in the community over this uh, proposed planning change. Um, it is consistent with some of the words that we've been hearing tonight about a consolidation of footprint and fitting in with uh, what seems awfully uh, close to what's been proposed by the Crows. Um, it is looking to many in the community, and I know you'll challenge me, Lord Mayor, it is looking to many in the community like a done deal. The government miraculously announces a planning change which is consistent with what's on the table for the crows at Park 2. And I've got to tell you, Lord Mayor, I've been getting emails and texts. I had one earlier from a, a person saying, we're tired of being played for fools. That is the sentiment that's abroad in the community. We're tired of being played for fools. Now, it is up to this council. It can say, let's vote against this. Let's wave it through. Um, but the problem is... Councillor Martin, are you any... addressing the chair? I beg your pardon? If you would address the chair, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I had some no, I thought you were back. actually um, um, talking to the gallery. But no. Address well, the chair. Well, that would be appreciated. Gallery, Lord Mayor. <laughs> thank you very that. much, Councillor Martin and um, members. Just a reminder to please you. address the chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, what we should be doing is saying to the state government, and we should be... I was looking to my colleagues, I'm sorry. Um, uh, what we should be saying to uh, the state government is, uh, we're on to you and you're not going to give a green light to the crows because that is what it looks like. Now, if we don't adopt this motion, then I repeat, it will be obvious to many people in the community that this is a done deal. Now, I know that uh, members of the uh, uh, colleagues, a team, and even you, Lord Mayor, believe that there is some sort of process here and that there will be some decision and some consultation. But unless this room tonight says to the state government, you're not going to predetermine this, we are going to tell you, we will write to you, we will say you are not going to do this, then if we don't do that, it does look suspiciously like a done deal to me. Members. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I rise to speak against this. Um, and um, respect, members, please. What? Respect. Something you may or may not know, but it's called respect. I don't laugh when you speak. I rise to speak against this, Lord Mayor. And the reason I speak against this is because councillors seem to be somehow stuck, stuck in the present. They don't reflectively look at the past and understand the relationships with the state government. This is not purely a DPA or planning change on one specific site. As we know, there are many sites that are taking place that the state government is currently looking at planning. Um, I know the council is pointing to a specific focus and he keeps talking and on repeat at every single council meeting at every single opportunity to try to undermine an unsolicited bid process that's currently sitting in place, trying different angles in whatever way we can the outcome is coming to a pointy end tonight when there's a deadline, there's a motion coming up that sets a deadline. So stop wasting time in this chamber to try to work out ways to how to undermine processes. The reality of the situation remains is this. At any time, the government can override council. At any time. We are custodians of the parklands and our lucky ratepayers have to spend $20 million a year maintaining parklands for all South Australians, which constitutes 20% of our rateable base. 20%. I mean, imagine that we can give back to ratepayers 20% of every single bill they pay because we have a perceived power over parklands. They overrode this council on the Oban. They did on the Riverbank precinct, took control of it. They did it with the Adelaide Oval. They put Adelaide Oval Act. 
They did it with the Lotus Ball Board of Victoria Square. You all suck. You are not effective as councillors in the past because you've delivered the outcomes. It's all talk. It is all talk. The state government, if you don't know how to work with the state government, they will come, they will override you and take control. That's what the state, which teaches you a lesson, by the way, that this is not your land to control. It isn't. The state government has the legislative power to change whatever it needs to change to make the decisions for the whole of South Australia. What I'd ask councillors to do, which is something they've never done in the past, is approach things in a soft diplomacy way. See how things work for you. Work with the state government to deliver outcomes, otherwise they'll rip planning for you. Which, guess what, Lord Mayor? We've lost planning in this council because we refuse to work with the state government. So they came to us and said, you know what? You have no control over planning. I assure you, if if the dear councillor Sims want to continue down this path, we will lose any sense of control or say over the parklands. Well done to you. Councillor Moran, then Councillor I wasn't going to speak on this because it's so clear that this is a good motion and many of the planning experts um, have said that this phrase in there is purpose written to allow something like this through. Now, as the Lord Mayor often says, we still retain the right to say no. If this goes in, we haven't got a leg to stand on. And just to, um, to uh, correct some of the things that uh, soon to be accepted, your mayor said, this council has been a fierce warrior for the parklands and a successful fierce warrior. We single-handedly, over a long battle, stopped the uh, so-called double-sided grandstand in Victoria Park, which turned out to be a just corporate office block. Uh, that was difficult. We eventually got both sides of um, Parliament to vote against it, even though some of the ministers really wanted. It's very easy to get on with governments when you do everything they want. We did everything that the um, Labor government wanted us to do. We bent over backwards for them. And I didn't notice they treated us any better. They treated us with no respect at all. We were gagging for a new uh, government to come in. Sadly, we've been a bit disappointed in some areas, but- um, Councillor, can I ask you to speak to the motion, please? Well, no, I'm just uh, answering a, a door that you allowed open talking about the past poor performance of councils, of which you were on, or oh, no, actually not on those. This council has been, not in that one, uh, this council has been an extremely effective, brave little warrior against Liberal and Labor governments. Uh, we, of course, they can override us any time they like. But the implication that the Deputy Lord Mayor is saying is that we need to work with them and bend over and do it. Well, of course we don't fight with them then. I mean, that's easy. We didn't fight with them last term either because we did every damn thing that they wanted. And this one, we did have a little bit of a fight about the hotel, but not much of one really. And there were personal reasons there, Deputy Lord Mayor, that we're all aware of. Um, we, um, this, is not, this motion's not about the unsolicited bid. Uh, that councillor denigrates anybody else getting off the subject. This is about a planning change that, as I think Michael Lennon said, or somebody quoted, somebody high up in planning said, could not believe how this was so in sync with the uh, aquatic centre uh, soon to be proposal. Um, purpose written it was. So if you just want to roll over every time for the government, they won't like you. They'll think you're, ju you're just soft touch. Um, be brave, stand up for what you believe. We never get a seat at the table. We want a seat at the table. We need a seat at the table. They'll say everything they want to do and they'll give us a seat at the table. We never get an effective Thank seat you, at the table. Moran. Councillor Hyde. Um. Thank you, Lord Mayor. A couple of questions from the outset. Was the administration at all consulted in the development of this new code? CEO. Three, Lord Mayor. I can guarantee no, we weren't. Right. So the state government have uh, seemingly written this on their own? Seemingly. Right. Okay. Uh, I agree with other councillors. Um, uh, it does seem, it does seem purpose written. Um, uh, to allow for such a development. Um, uh, but I think, I think it also reinforces what the Deputy Lord Mayor um, uh, has been saying, which is, and to explain it in a public policy sense, when, 
when, when a level of government is so brittle that it just says no to everything, or doesn't make a decision, refuses to make a decision, it inevitably breaks. If there's flexibility and malleability, then you can maintain a seat at the table. Um, and what this does, put it this way, when it comes to AFC and when it comes to Park 2, I would much rather have the City of Adelaide have a seat at the table deciding what happens. I would much rather the City of Adelaide have a seat at the table deciding what happens than again take a, a very hard line approach and saying, no, um, you can't even approach us, you can't even negotiate with us um, uh, and because we know what they'll do. This is an indication of intent. This is an indication of intent. And what they'll do, exactly. we actually, we probably don't even want to think about what they would do. Um, so I would much rather this council has a say in what happens to that site. Um, when it comes to this code in particular, um, uh, uh, please, if I could, through the chair, CEO, our first briefing on the planning and design code, that was uh, yesterday, was it not? Through Lord Mayor, yes, yesterday, and there will be a series coming mm. forward. I imagine there'll be many. That's correct. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, there are other parts of the code that deal with the parklands. I'm not willing to consider one particular part of that uh, code relevant to the parklands in isolation. Um, I don't think we have enough information before us. Certainly, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've nailed my colours to the mast. We see what this is. We know what this is. Um, uh, and councillors who just want to say no to everything should be aware that if you keep saying no, um, you might end up with something that uh, that you don't want at all and that the community doesn't want, but it's something the state government wants. Um, and that's why I would say we should just tread very carefully, consider all of the uh, parts of the planning and design code relevant to the parklands at once, and we can feed that into the process. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to the mover, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm a bit um, disturbed by what I'm hearing here tonight, um, Lord Mayor. You know, anyone would think that what I was proposing was that we you know, storm uh, the state government and uh, stage some sort of occupation. What I'm suggesting is that we request that administration prepare a submission on the draft planning and design code reflecting our position that we don't want to see a change in language that would uh, facilitate um, a, 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 a private uh, private provider moving in that's going to be offering a sporting club room. I mean, really, it's not that radical, Lord Mayor. Um, and I am very disturbed um, by uh, the vision that some councillors have for this council. Um, if we're not here to actually advocate for the community, if we're not here to stand up for our residents and ratepayers and take the fight up to the state government on their behalf, why are we here? I mean, some councillors seem to think that the role of city council is to be a glorified welfare unit for the big end of town, to just look at subsidies for business, and the only time that they ever want to advocate on anything is when it comes to land tax reform. I mean, I didn't hear the Deputy Lord Mayor say we can't possibly take the fight up to the government when it comes to the big end of town, but when it comes to the parklands, that's a bridge too far. It is really disturbing, Lord Mayor. And I'm concerned that some members of this council have absolutely no appreciation of what it means to be an effective advocate. Being an effective advocate doesn't mean sitting there, sitting there, you know, fawning, trying to get a seat at the table, sitting there, fawning, trying to get a seat at the table. I see the Deputy Lord Mayor um, laughing away. He uh, pointed out the powers that we've lost under his watch during his last 10 years of council. How's the, t how's the self diplomacy working for you, Deputy Lord Mayor? Not very well. What we actually need is to take a strong position and to advocate effectively for our residents and ratepayers. And if this motion is not passed tonight, then the community will conclude that this council is spineless and incompetent when it comes to standing up for the parklands. It really is a wasted opportunity. What I'm suggesting is not a radical approach. It's making a submission to the government to tell them that we stand with the community when it comes to fighting for their land. And if, let me say, some councillors don't share that vision, then why on earth are they here? Councillors. Uh, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please rise and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Martin, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims.
Members, that takes us to 15.3, Councillor Moran. Now, um, sorry, Councillor Canon. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, yes, I, I just wish to declare a perceived uh, uh, conflict of interest, uh, uh, considering that my son is the, the minister in the, in the actual motion. Um, and so I, I will, may take part in the conversation, but I won't be voting. Thank you, Councillor Connell. Councillor Moran. Well, look, just judging, to save a little bit of time. Uh, I'll, I'll look for a seconder, if you... Thank yes, you, well, I, may, I may or may not. Um, I think this motion is very clear, and thank you for the seconding it. Um, apart from um, Mary's um, little um, very good vote last last uh, motion, we have had a completely factional vote on every single motion. Very disappointing. Um, so I realise that this motion will go down. I think it's a good idea to have a minister of our own. It's, it wasn't aimed, as uh, Sam rather uh, aggressively said, at Mr Stephen, Stephen Cronell. It was that we should have our own separate minister. When the minister for the local government and the minister for Adelaide is the same person, it basically means we have no set, we have no specified minister. But look, I, I really can't bear listening to uh, the debate that's going to nitpick this and pull it down and eventually vote. I'll call it a vision at the end, and I think you'll see what I mean. Uh, Councillor Sims. I preserve my life. Members. Uh, Councillor Hyde. Sorry. I want the motion to be caught, Lord. I need someone else to do that, Councillor Moran. So, Councillor Martin, are you asking for the motion to be put? If uh, the Councillor asked would somebody put the motion, I'm happy to put the motion. I, I would like the motion to be caught. I'm tired of this factional rhetoric and I think we just, just made up your minds about gangsters. Sorry, sorry, Councillor Moran, if I can just hold you for a moment. Sorry, sorry, Councillor Moran. So one other person has to speak first before a motion can be put. So your seconder can speak, or or someone else. Sorry, Councillor. I'm happy to uh, happy to speak. Uh, look, very briefly, um, Lord Mayor. I think this is a very sensible um, motion. It's not um, a, an attack on. Um, Minister Canol, um, as seems to have been um, interpreted, I certainly didn't read it that way. Um, rather, I thought it was about looking at how the City of Adelaide can have, you know, to use the phrase of um, the outgoing Deputy Lord Mayor, um, a seat at the table. Um, and, you know, it is actually important that we have a dedicated minister that acts as a conduit between the council and um, the state government. And the problem is when you have the city of Adelaide being lumped in with the local government uh, area in general, then um, there runs a risk that the area is, is not given um, the uh, level of focus that potentially could be given. And that's why I think having a separate minister um, is um, the way to go. So I, I think this is a pretty straightforward motion um, and I'd encourage members to support it. I have Councillor Hyde and Councillor Carrow. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it's hard to reconcile Councillor Moran's comments that she made just now with, with what she said in the media, but I, I will attempt to do so, I suppose, here on the floor. So uh, when we're talking about a minister for the City of Adelaide, we've already got a minister who's responsible for the City of Adelaide, Stefan Knoll. I see that she's suggesting that we appoint another minister. But if we go and appoint another minister, what you're, you're effectively asking the Premier to do is to take someone from the backbench, put them in the cabinet, give them $100,000 at least pay rise, give them a chauffeur car, give them a driver, give them an EA, give them a, at least one advisor, probably two advisors, give them a media advisor, give a departmental liaison officer. You're looking at probably ongoing expenses here for over a million dollars a year um, just to indulge this. Now, um, uh, so, so I, I find hard to believe that that is at all in keeping with any sort of efficient government. And then as well, of course, 
we, we're looking to carve it out as the local government uh, sort of area, local government portfolio. I mean, we are a local government government body. Of course, we do have, we've got our own act, and the Minister for Local Government is responsible, at least in this government, for overseeing that act. Um, at a time when I think we're, when we're going through all this local government reform, where the Local Government Act is going to be completely split open and redone, where there will, be need, there will need to be changes to the City of Adelaide Act, I think it's very, very unwise um, uh, to remove those and put them across portfolios, across ministers, across offices, um, because they actually need to be considered together um, uh, in order for the best decision to be made, I think, by the government. So, um, uh, so I'm, I'm still not sure where we're going here. And of course, the, the comments made about, you know, it's better to have a separate minister and we're a capital city and we should raise ourselves above everything um, are, are all well and good. But of course, the comments in the paper were not around that. The comments that Councillor Moran made in the paper were actually uh, focusing and honing in on the personal relationship of an area councillor here at this council with the minister. I, I think the wording was something along the lines of, oh, it would be awkward for me to go to Minister Knowles and complain about, about councillor. Um, and yeah, it would, but of course, um, uh, councillor, <laughs> councillor Moran, councillor Moran should know the process for complaints. They actually go to the Ombudsman. Um, there is a completely separate process. You shouldn't be approaching the minister at all. In fact, it's the Lord Mayor's job to deal with the minister um, uh, directly. But um, it's those comments that have, have, I think, rather shamefully coloured where I think this is coming from. And that is uh, an unfortunately lowbrow attack on a fellow area councillor that Councillor Moran ran against in the election. I think, I think the sort of politics... I think we'll stick to the motion. Thank you. Well, I, I would just sum up by saying, Lord Mayor, that I looked at this motion through many different lenses, and it was the last one that I just explained that made uh, any sense to me whatsoever. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Kerr. Uh, well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, uh, I haven't made my mind up about this motion. Um, uh, it, it's uh, it's unfortunate because uh, you know you do. Uh, I, I know Councillor Moran is uh, talking about nitpicking, whatever. But you know, your instant response when you have something presented like this is to think about what what are the concerns here. That that's just natural. What is needed? Uh, what would help? Uh, would be those, uh, particularly uh, those councillors who have experience uh, uh, under such a uh, framework to talk about the advantages particularly the advantages to rate payers. What I'd like to hear, really, because I haven't made up, it, it might be a good thing, my concern, and it's perfectly legitimate to have concern, it's not nitpicking. My concern is uh, one of over-governance. If you have a, a minister appointed for Adelaide, does that mean uh, then you will have another person who will want to interfere uh, more and more uh, in the affairs of, of local government um, and, and, and want to put their fingers into our bailiwick? It, it, is that how it happened in the past? I don't know. I wasn't here. Um, I'd love to hear those things because um, you know it may have really good merit for our constituents. Does it mean more money for our constituents, Lord Mayor? Did it mean more money for our constituents in the past? I don't know. So I'd humbly uh, suggest uh, the Chamber, perhaps uh, let's not just assume that everyone has <coughs> made their minds up on, on factional or whatever lines. It helps no one. It doesn't help constituents. I would love to hear from other uh, councillors as to what the benefits or the uh, uh, the the, the uh, detriment may be of such a motion. I'd really appreciate it, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Abraham. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm obviously going to speak against this. Um, this is um, this is a uh, uh, this is <laughs> this is a very well crafted political motion by Councillor Moran. I know how very well she operates and I have a lot of respect for how she does it. The reality of the situation is this. I can't recall any previous Minister of Adelaide that has done anything specific for the city. I mean, we're talking about outcomes here, right? We've got the Member of Adelaide, which the Lord Mayor meets with at a lot of occasions and connects with. Uh, we have a Capital City Committee, which Councillor seems to forgot completely about, uh, which is the actual yeah, mechanism happens, in the Act that actually is the actual official interchange between the City of Adelaide and the State Government. I mean, that is the official mechanism endorsed, funded by Council, funded by the State Government, for us to have that dialogue. On top of that, we are now going to tell the Premier who he should appoint as Minister. That's what we should, uh, that's what we should be telling Councillor Martin, please be quiet. I can't stand your voice on a 3 minute time. Please. 
Um, so um, the reality of the situation remains is we are, Councillor Moran is requesting here something very clear. She is requesting that the power that has been given by the Premier of the state government to the Minister for Local Government, which happens to be the Minister for Transport um, as well, that has delegation over the city of Adelaide. She's asking the Premier to remove that delegation from that minister and to appoint someone else. So either Premier should sack the minister or the minister should resign. I mean, that's what the motion should be calling for, either the sacking of the minister or the resignation of the minister, because we as a city now are going to interfere in parliament and state government affairs when it comes to who they appoint. They might as well also interfere in our affairs, Lord Mayor, and tell us who should chair a committee of council. They should do that. You know, I can, I can see Parliament, State Parliament doing that now, where they're interfering in that regard. Councillors, let's please stop wasting time with rubbish motions that we are getting the city to move nowhere. We need to make a difference. This is political grandstanding and it needs to stop. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll make it short, sharp and shiny. Um, if I can start with a question of administration. Um, have we had a request like this uh, come to the Chamber in the last couple of, couple of years or so? Three Lord Mayor, no, not that we're aware of. Okay. And it just makes me think what's uh, the true intention of this motion. If I can remind the members of, um, of the past Minister for, uh, for the City of Adelaide, and that was John Rao. Now, um, uh, I managed to Google him, and uh, here are his uh, portfolios. John Rao had an electorate, uh, the electorate of, uh, of Enfield. He was the, uh, the Deputy Premier. He was the Attorney General. He was the Minister for Planning. He was the Minister for the City of Adelaide. He was the Minister for Child Protection Reform. He was the Minister for Justice. He was also the Minister of Industrial Relations. He was the Minister for Public Sector. He was the Minister for Consumer and Business Services. And that's right, it is. It is very long. He was also the Minister for Local Government. Now that's 10 different portfolios there. If that guy can do it with 10 different portfolios, what makes uh, the current minister so different? And if anything, given the current experience of the, uh, uh, of, of the minister, knowing that he has worked and managed a business, a successful business here in the city, in the central markets, he's gone to school here, he's gone to Adelaide University, you'd be surprised, Lord Mayor, what you find in Google. He's even, he's even been a DJ at the London Tavern. So like I said, if you, if you keep pointing out <laughs> what, so what our current minister has gotten up to, the ball needs to go Thank you, Councillor Abraham. So, Councillor Martin. Look, Lord Mayor, I'm, I'm surprised at the humbug that's going on here, particularly with the Deputy Lord Mayor complaining that there's some move afoot to sack Minister Canole. Um, it was the Deputy Lord Mayor, who I recall only a few weeks ago, proposed that the Treasurer should not hold that portfolio, that he should be moved. It should go to someone in the lower house. And I recall the treasurer admonishing this council saying, how dare you comment on matters of who should be in a state government portfolio? That's a matter for the premier. And the same man stands here and criticizes somebody else. Now there's a word for that. And when it comes to me, I'll use it. Oh, is that it? Okay, thank you. Now, look, Lord Mayor, uh, I also hear the arguments over here from Councillor Hyde suggesting that the appointment of a minister will lead to enormous cost. And I do appreciate he's cost conscious, apart from junkets in Sydney, at ratepayer expense. Councillor Martin, to spend please money. speak to the motion. Well, I am. It's about cost. And he says Thank you, Councillor this Martin. Could lead, this could lead to cost to ratepayers. It's perfectly possible for a minister in the state government to hold a range of portfolios and to be the minister for Adelaide. Now, I actually understand what Councillor Moran is saying. And I might say anecdotally, I saw Minister Canole in the market at the very same stall that uh, Councillor Abrahamson had mentioned last week at France's stall. And I remember thinking, what an engaging person. But the trouble is he's engaged with everybody else. He's engaged with the city of West Torrens. He's engaged with the city of Walkerville. He's engaged with every local government area in South Australia. We are the only local government area that has a City of Adelaide Act. We have our own legislation. And you know, and it's going to come to a, a great surprise to many of my colleagues here, 
we actually don't have the same interests as other councils. I know that's a big surprise to you, but when it comes to a range of Councilor issues, Martin. including the management of the parklands. Thank you. I'm just asking you to address the chair. I don't know why tonight you're not. Normally you do. Oh, Lord Mayor, I'm talking to everybody. I, you know, I am an inclusive person and I'm tempted. But, but actually, as you well know, when you address the chamber, you address the chair, not the rest of the chamber. I understand that, Lord Mayor, but I am aware that I am the only councillor who's been criticised for that, while others have been doing it throughout the I world. have reminded everybody of All right, well, I'll, I'll uh, monitor the situation and adjust my behaviour. Mm. Now, I say to everybody, understand that there are separate circumstances, a separate act. And some of those circumstances have include matters that the Deputy Lord Mayor has raised. He's not there, sorry. The Deputy Lord Mayor has raised. During the last term of council, he spoke about the need for the City of Adelaide to expand, to take in other council areas. Lord Mayor, I was interrupted for a good 30% of the time I was speaking by you, may I have uh, an extension? I think you were interrupted by about five seconds, so I'll give you an extra 15. Thank you. During the, uh, the last term of council, the Deputy Lord Mayor proposed that there be a review of local government boundaries. A Minister for Local Government would have a very different set of priorities to a Minister for the City of Adelaide. And briefly to the point of Councillor Councillor Sims, please, I'm trying to listen Sorry. to Councillor Martin. I, I honestly, Lord Mayor, I do not know of any other councillor you interrupt as often as you do me. And, and I, I do find it disconcerting, and I wonder sometimes whether that's the intention. With that, I'll sit down. There's no point. Thank you, Councillor about. Martin. And that is not the intention. Um, I'm sorry, so. Councillor Kuros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, a lot of theatrics tonight, a lot of political grandstanding, sitting here quietly um, tonight, listening to everybody and what they have to say. And, uh, you know, it just seems to me that these motions that have come in tonight seems to be have a, a hidden agenda. But at the end of the day, we're talking about this motion here, and there isn't anything to suggest to me tonight from any argument to why we need a new minister, except for saying that we're what, what did you call it, Councillor? Or what did Councillor Martin call it? I think it's because we're different. Um, and that's, and I, I've heard many times that uh, Councillor Moran has always had a dig at uh, Councillor Canole having the minister for a son. So I think she's got a hidden agenda here. I actually don't believe that there is an intention here of actually creating a minister um, just for the city of Adelaide uh, for all intention purposes. There seems to be something underlining here, and I, I just don't see this motion um, actually having, you know, coming coming forward to be in an honest sense. Thank you. Members, anybody else like to speak? If not, I'll go back to the move, Councillor Moran. To I'd say. rather object, um, Lord Mayor, to, to the lack of um, pulling up other councillors, where you see very, uh, that I've been called dishonest, underhand, and many a thing. And that is not, uh, Councillor Martin occasionally looking elsewhere is not nearly as serious as the accusations Point of order, just Lord made. Mayor, is she meant to be talking to the motion, or are we going to be having a debate? Thank you, Councillor Cross, Councillor Martin, uh, Councillor Moran. Sorry. So similar. I know. I know. It's very hard. Uh, just, just to fill in some of the enormous blanks in the new members, um, we have always had our own minister, Jane Lomax Smith, one that springs to mind. Um, we tried, uh, and a few others. So this, this is just asking to go back to the normal situation. When you're the Minister of Local Government and of the City of Adelaide, you're really not the Minister of the City of Adelaide, are you? Because that becomes defunct then. Because if you're the Minister of Local Government, of course you're also the Minister for the City of Adelaide. And although it's been sneered at, we do have a separate role. Um, we, are, we do operate under a different act um, than the Local Government Act. And to answer um, Councillor Keres, it was nice having a separate minister. Mr. Rao wasn't. He was the same as Mr. Canole. He was both local government and City of Adelaide. So therefore, he wasn't. Sorry? Ten portfolios. Councillor Abraham today, please. I, I don't care what other portfolios he has. The thing I'm saying is that if you are the City of Adelaide 
minister and the local government minister, one becomes defunct. And that's us. We don't have our own minister. And it was very nice having a minister of our own. They did interfere sometimes, but at least we had a seat at that table with our minister. The Capital City Committee is hopeless. It meets in secret. It's not allowed to tell you about what it does. We have no input into the agenda. It's a waste of time. Um, so I've answered, I've answered Mary. We've always had a minister. This is not a new thing. I'm just asking to go back to the situation that existed before. Um, yes, we can complain to the minister. And yes, it would be awkward with his dad on council. So I would have to go to the ombudsman if I was going to complain. Uh, so it would be nice to have somebody else. Uh, the current Deputy Lord Mayor called long and loudly in this chamber and using his position as Deputy Lord Mayor to ask Rob Lucas to be sacked. I am definitely not asking for the minister to be sacked. I'm asking for another minister that doesn't hold the local port the local government portfolio to have that job. And then obviously the money that Mr Canole is paid for being the Adelaide minister would then go to him. So it would be cost neutral. And anyway, I don't care. Good government comes at a price. Uh, the government does interfere in who we appoint. APLA for one. Um, we were told who to appoint there. Um, I object to, where is the sum? I object to saying, obviously, he will vote against it. That is what's wrong. You're going to vote against it. 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 Councillor Moran, please. It is a factional vote. I, and I'll call a division. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You can't. You can't what point of clarification, though? She's summed up. She's summed up. But well, we were just told that the Capital City Committee was useless and we can't have an input. Councillor Hyde just uh, uh, amended the Council so. Councillor, we have finished. We're going to go to the vote. Thank you. Those in favour? Those against? Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, the vote's been taken. Um, thank you for you voted against your own motion. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Council's division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. What an enormous shock! Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Love your work. Absolutely signing. Love your work. Keep bringing motions, everyone. Well, And for a point of clarification, members, uh, agenda items for the Capital City Committee uh, actually come from the Chamber. You are uh, able at any time to put something on the agenda. Um, it actually is functioning very well. Thank you very much. And we have had proof of that in terms of having several uh, partnerships and funding from the state government, such as the skate park, such as the Quinton Kenahan play space, such as the black spot crossing on West Terrace, which are all from the Capital City Committee in our discussions. Thank you. Let us continue. We will go to uh, 15.4, Councillor Moran, World Heritage Listing uh, of the Park Yes, now this was to congratulate you, Lord Mayor. Um, congratulations for your very wise um, comments. I'm going to withdraw that motion and move on to um, the next motion, which is more pertinent. Thank you. So 15.5 has been withdrawn. I'm uh, sorry, 15.4 has been withdrawn. I will uh, move that, that takes... again in the future. Someone know you're just busting to vote for that. I wanted to support you. Mm, I'm just not giving you the satisfaction. 15.5, um, <laughs> Councillor Moran, motion on um, I move that the council notes that it appears no, sorry. It notes that it appears the council believes the unsolicited bid process stops at consulting with the public on the aquatic centre plans. However, it doesn't stop the Crows doing so. Notes that consultation with the public would provide both the Crows and the council important feedback as to whether the concept plans were going in the right direction as far as the public concerned. Public public is concerned before they spend vast sums of money preparing detailed plans. Request that the Adelaide Football Club release the concept plans for the Aquatic Centre to the public to elicit useful public feedback. You have a secondary and Councillor Sims may speak to the motion. Now, Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, I think this is just um, hammering home again the sensible idea that we needed to ask people whether they wanted us to start down this track that we have already started down the track, so that opportunity has been missed. 
What I'm saying now is the implication that you that you haven't seen anything is, is incorrect. We have seen quite specific point plans. of order, Councillor Moran. I've actually said we have not received a proposal. I know, but there's an implication. As I said, the implication that we haven't seen much is, um, I think, misleading. We have seen architectural drawings of a proposal that Councillor is... Councillor Moran, I, sorry, I will remind you of confidentiality. We have seen plans of things. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sorry. we've seen plans of things that I, as a ratepayer, would really like to um, share with the other ratepayers because the things that we saw plans of as I'm speaking as a rate payer, would not be something I would be particularly happy with. Now, I think, I know you know, I, there's some conspiracy theory that I've got, da, 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 da. But if I was the Adelaide Football Club, I would have released them by now myself because I'd want to know whether I was running down the wrong rabbit hole. And personally, I think they are um, without releasing any confidentiality. That's my own opinion on the plans for the things I saw. Um, and I think rather than racking up enormous amounts of money, um, I would take the public with me rather than create... A, a lot of people know that I said, oh, really, they're just going to ask us what colour to paint the front door, aren't they? Because it's already done, it's been heaps of money, I've heard it before, how can we say no now? We are stuck in a vortex of having to say yes to something because we've led them along so far. We've never checked with the public. Um, there is nothing ulterior motive about this. I noticed that there's a similar motion that came after my motion by um, Councillor Kouros, saying that she demands the, the plans to be put on the uh, December Councilor the 10th. Moran, we're talking to your motion at the moment. Right. Well, I, I'm, I will be foreshadowing a, um, if this fails, which it inevitably will, um, because the faction won't vote for it, um, that we all know that those plans are coming around that time. It's a bit like saying, if Christmas doesn't come on December the whatever it is, I'm cancelling it. Oh, tough stand. And not tough at all, because we know that's when the plans are coming. Um, so uh, don't be fooled by the sudden nervousness of the North Adelaide Ward Councillor. She's picked the wrong horse um, in this, and she's trying to get a bit of ground back. It won't come back, Mary. You support this. Uh, you have been an enthusiastic proponent Councillor of the Moran. concept plan. Point of order, Lord Mayor. I mean, there's no, point, there's she, no point of order there. Oh, I'm not, she claimed that on. Yeah. I haven't said anything. So uh, it's up to the Councillor Carruthers to say what the point of order is. Members, please. You have voted in this meeting against everything that pertains to us getting control over the Aquatic Centre. You voted against Councillor Sims. Is this a motion about me? Councillor Moran, we are talking to the motion. You asked me a question. Lord, Thank you. The Councillors, I'll ask you both to sit down. You will sit down, Councillor Moran. I think I've actually done enough warnings tonight for everybody. <laughs> Councillor Sims, would you like to speak to the motion? Reserve my right. Thank you. Thank Members, you. Councillor Kerra. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I'm... Uh, uh, I was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to digest the... Uh, I'm trying to digest the rapid, uh, the, rapid, the rapid motion of events. I'm still... My brain's catching up. Forgive me. Um, Lord Mayor, um, look, look, I will speak against this, and I can give oh. Councillor Moran a reason. I can give Councillor Moran a reason. Councillor Moran, look, please. I mean, you know, on the one hand, Councillor Moran says, well, look, you know, people are coming in this chamber with their minds made up, that it's yes. all factional. And on the other hand, when someone proffers a reason as to why they made that concern, why they made trouble, they're, they're, no one wants to listen to it. We're just going to shut them down. We're going to shut down those concerns. We won't listen to them. Um, I don't get it. Which which is a council matter? May I humbly suggest uh, you allow me to at least give you the reason that you have requested uh, as to why a, a, a councillor may or may not vote for your for your motion. I'm concerned about this. I'm troubled about this because uh, first, uh, above everything else, I am troubled about the precedent this sets and the sovereign risk this presents for council. The sovereign risk, Lord Mayor. This is something that unfortunately is not, I think, uh, discussed or at least acknowledged. 
uh, in this chamber uh, enough. If you set uh, rules, if you say to a commercial organisation, uh, here is the procedure we're going to follow uh, in, in advance, here's the procedure, uh, and you then direct them to release plans that they may have. Incidentally, I have not seen concept plans. I don't know if they exist. They may well exist. The, the, the Adelaide Football Club may have concept plans of their own, but we are telling the midstream, we're going to change the rules. We want you to release those to the public. They're a commercial organisation. They've come in and, uh, in, in good faith based on a, on, a, on a procedure that we have presented to them. They come in halfway. What is the message that that is sent, uh, that is sent by, this, uh, uh, um, by this council uh, to other commercial organisations? That is sovereign risk. That is the reason I'm deeply concerned about this motion. That is why I cannot vote for it at this stage, but I am open to what Councillor Moran and other councillors say about that issue. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, maybe I can help uh, allay some of Councillor Kerr's concerns here, because the administration makes it very clear in their comment that we can, by resolution, change the terms of the unsolicited process and actually ask the Crows to release material if we so wish. Um, so if there are um, concept plans, then um, we can ask the Crows to release uh, what work they have done so far and make that publicly available. And, you know, this is consistent with the position that I've been advocating all along, Lord Mayor. Um, councillors may recall uh, through you, Lord Mayor, that back in April I proposed that we begin consultation when um, the Crows first lodged uh, a, um, a bid, um, that we begin consultation on the threshold question of whether or not we should see uh, the Crows develop the parklands. And I've been pushing that all along. What I like about Councillor Moran's motion is that it asks the Crows to release any concept plans that they have right now. Get them out right now, get the community talking about them, give them an opportunity to see it. And that also gives the Crows the opportunity to, um, I'm, I'm trying to convince you here, Councillor Kira, you're talking while I'm speaking. This is responding to your concerns, um, responding to your concerns. Um, what this does is gives the Crows then the opportunity to get, uh, to get uh, feedback from the community and uh, to take that into account as they move throughout the process, if indeed council does go down that direction. So, you know, I'd encourage people to tone down the rhetoric and let's actually consider this on its merits. I think it's a very sensible idea. There is no harm in asking the Crows to release any information that they already have. You know, sovereign risk, maybe Councillor Kira has been watching a bit too much of the Crown. I think we're safe here. Um, there's no reason uh, why this can't proceed. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Height. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think there's something in this that hasn't actually been contemplated potentially by the mover or by others. Um, uh, it's a very disturbing um, aspect of this motion. Request that the Adelaide Football Club release the concept plans um, for what they what they want to do on part two to elicit useful public feedback. The way I see that, part three is asking the uh, Adelaide Football Club uh, to release those plans and then go to consultation on that. And I think to place that in the hands of the Adelaide Football Club would be a, a, a gross misstep. Um, and it's something that we as a council would not want to do. I don't want the Adelaide Football Club to consult on their proposal. I wouldn't trust a consultation that they came up with. Um, what should happen is that we should be consulting on the plans that they submit to us. To ask, uh, to ask um, at the Adelaide Football Club to consult on what they want to do with part two, to go to the public with that, I think is outrageous. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure if that was contemplated by it. Furthermore as well, I know that it says requests in this, and I'm not sure if that's just a drafting um, issue, but is that sort of an ask nicely, could you please release them? Um, uh, really, if we're council and we do have control over that process, you should say direct, but um, uh, that's just some feedback. Nevertheless, I won't be supporting this because I don't believe um, that we that the Adelaide Football Club should be consulting on this proposal um, in the slightest. That's the role for us. Um, we should be doing that with our ratepayers and with the community. We shouldn't be asking the club to do it for us. Hey, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Coors. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, I missed you. Uh, basically, um, Councillor Moran is asking for the AFC to consult with the public and give feedback on whether their plans are going in the right direction. She's concerned about how much they're spending, going to spend in regards to the proposal, and it reads to me like she wants to help them along. 
Um, I don't understand the purpose of this motion, um, and, and it's you know, are we really? Do we really care how much the crows actually or AFC spends in regards to this proposal? I mean, it's not affecting council's budget at all. Or, or, so, go ahead, go for your life, put the proposal in. Um, let us consult because let let the, let the council drive the consultation and actually speak directly to our ratepayers. If you leave this in the hands of the AFC, Councilor you're going Sims. to get an absolutely different type of consultation process. So part of this unsolicited bid process is the consultation. Um, and I will be interested to see how we move through that. Um, and, and I don't, I just think that this is again, another political grandstanding that, that Councillor Moran looks like she's doing great things. Councillor Carras, please stick to the motion. Thank you. The Adelaide Football Club from submitting anything. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm going to surprise Councillor Moran and say I don't support this uh, again. Um, we are bringing the same motion over and over again. There seems three councillors in this chamber that don't get that there's a process in place. I am very, very understanding that they're passionate about it. The matter of fact, you just don't seem to get it. You keep bringing it back in. Keep, keep doing it as long as you want. We can be here till midnight. We can be here for three weeks. The reality of the situation is this process is very clear. We're going to wait out, get the proposal in. Once it's in, we'll go out to consult. As Councillor Hyde mentioned, the reason I can't support this motion is for the same basis that he presented and also Councillor Kira. You don't change process midway. That's one rule of engagement because it, it's, it's a bad reputational risk for Council. Two, the other issue here, I don't trust the Crows consulting our right payers. And Councillor Sims, to use one of his beautiful statements is this is like leaving Dracula at the blood bank. This is exactly what it is with the crows. You know, they lead the process, they've got the commercial benefit, they decide to tailor their questions the way they want, uh, and then guess what? Even if they do that for you, I guarantee you, Councillor Moran is going to come to the chamber or one of the other councillors is going to say, we deem the, council, the consultation by the crows void. <laughs> because we didn't do it and we think you know there was foul play there and let's start the games all over again councillors i urge you please let's stop playing politics with this we have a process in place stick to the process once the, proposal, place. once the proposal has been submitted to council it will be released to the public and as we know there's another motion coming in tonight that's going to set a deadline so please go home and sleep well at the next council meeting we should have a proposal if there isn't one if there isn't one then they will not have the opportunity to go as part of this process full stop stop wasting your time stop it well, uh, Martin. Oh, look, I, I do object to the condescending tone of the Deputy Lord Mayor, and I know we only have Point of order, Lord two. Mayor. Very important to note, I am not condescending. Yes, you are. Yeah. facts. Yes, you are. Only to the three of you. Councillor no? Martin. Well, Councillors, okay. please. Can Councillor Martin please come Thank you. Oh, no, feel free to interrupt. Um, uh, he is condescending. There's no question about that. Sure. And, and, in fact, this whole evening has been about Team Adelaide squirming over part two, squirming away. They are squirmers and they have good reason to be squirmers because this is a dog. The best thing that this council can do is come clean, be transparent, give the things we're not allowed to talk about to the general public to inspect. They'd love to see the things and understand some of the things we know about that we can't talk about. But let me assure everybody, there are things, they are there. We should open our books, let everyone see how transparent we are and do it now. There's no reason why these uh, things can't be released tomorrow. The motion that's being proposed later on talks about releasing plans, I'm sure, for consultation, but there's no detail about when or how. This says release the things, release the things, do it now. As clarification, 
I am not in receipt of any things, Councillor Martin, and nor are you. Yes, Lord Mayor, I have seen things. I have seen. I have seen, I have seen things. things. I've seen things. Yes, I, I have actually. I will go back things. to Councillor. Oh, any sorry members? Is there anyone else would like to speak? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Moran to say. Yeah, I, I just wish to, um, for the gallery, say we have been briefed by the Crows. And we've seen concept plans. I don't know where did, um, Council Carer was, but they were quite nice plans. Uh, and the things we saw, I, in my estimation of uh, Park Dan people and people that care about the Park Dan's, would not have been acceptable. And I would like, uh, I, I find it very funny, something who's been really rude to the football club, you know, they can spend as much money, why would we care? Uh, we're not going to take their concept. I'm not, I, last time I checked, that is not a typing error, Councillor Hyde who makes uh, condescending a new art form, the word is requests. It doesn't direct, it doesn't demand. And if I was the Crows, I would have already released them. I would have said, put them in the advertiser, nice colourful spread or um, in daily, and said, this is what we've put to council and get the feedback from that. I'm not asking for a consultation from them. Public feedback comes from the media. And I'm sure our print media, television media, would like to show that. And that's what we did with the Oval. I'm not asking us to fly to the moon. The um, Adelaide Oval concept plans were released before the City Council had had a formal proposal. And it brought really good feedback from the public via the media. I certainly wouldn't accept a consultation from a close. That's entirely inappropriate. And that's putting words in my motion that aren't there. Um, reputational risk was talked about. I think. This council has had more re um, reputational damage in my whole 20 whatever it is years from this issue. I've never seen a council so wrong footed. Everything we've asked for, Deputy Lord Mayor says we've seen it coming back. We asked for um, consultation of whether the public wanted us to go down this track. We, we, we are singing the same song because we know the right track to go down. You are heading for electoral and um, reputational annihilation in the way you're doing it. You're doing it pig-headedly and I see a lot of squirming. We know, we know pretty much that the plans are going to be here by December the 10th, which is in Mary's motion. So it is like if Christmas doesn't occur on Christmas Day, I'm cancelling it. It is not brave or, or strong to demand something that is already in the pipeline and going to happen. Um, we have seen contact, uh, the motion up, up ahead that no doubt will be a passed ask that the detailed concept plans, there's no such thing as detailed concept plans. There are concept plans and there's detailed plans. So I gather that Deputy Lord Mayor had no say in the uh, uh, writing of that because he wouldn't have let such Councillor Moran, you're speaking words. to your motion, As not I the, said, the following motion. As I said, I'm only requesting um, that they release their plans. It's for their own good and it will give us information. There is no subplot. I think you're crediting with me far, far more cunning than, than uh, I, I have got. This is just asking what we've been asking. Go to the public. They own the land. They would like to see the concept plans too. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, if we can go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Uh, fails. Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please rise and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Thank you. Members, that now takes us to uh, 15.6. Councillor Martin. Um, oh, I've lost the will. Um, look, I, um, Lord Mayor, um, uh, I propose, as printed, a motion on notice, um, uh, seconded by Councillor Sims. Um, uh, look, my intention was on behalf of ratepayers in North Adelaide uh, to raise the issue um, about the inability of uh, uh, people to use uh, public facilities in parkland buildings, particularly in North Adelaide and at Park 10. I note that the administration says that agreement has been reached already in regard to public use of um, uh, the toilets at the university facilities 
uh, on Park 10. Um, uh, and while I would ask members to support this, uh, there is no uh, longer the urgency. I am not busting as I was. Councillor Sims. <laughs> oh, great theatre tonight. Thank you, members. I'm really quite enjoying this. Um, members, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Martin, sum up. Okay. <laughs> um, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Oh, yes. Division. Division, yes. <laughs> Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Absolutely. Councillor Martin, Councillor Ho, Councillor Sims. What a joke. So, councillors, that takes us to 15.6, uh, 15.7, my apologies, uh, which Councillor Martin, City of Adelaide Aboriginal Employment. Well, Lord Mayor, I'm, uh, I'm merely rising uh, so that I can see the spectre again of the team voting against this. I, can't, I, I don't count Councillor uh, Ho in, uh, into that. Uh, I appreciate his vote on the previous uh, matter. But look, um, this, this matter um, is in our stretch reconciliation plan. It simply invites the administration to prepare a report for us. Uh, and uh, to present, it's been seconded by Councillor Sims. Sorry, sorry, members, I did actually uh, write down Councillor Sims. I just didn't say it. Um, it is already in our stretch uh, reconciliation plan. Um, it, it simply asks the administration to um, prepare a report for us to be presented no later than February on a scheme that will provide the traineeships and the apprenticeships which are, as all of you know, from having read the stretch reconciliation plan in there, but without any detail. So this actually says to the administration, now we've committed to this plan, can we please have some detail about how we're going to meet that target of uh, not 1.8%, but even 2% if possible, um, by the deadline, which is 2021. Um, it is nothing uh, uh, that is going to lead to additional cost. It simply means that where our employment processes allow it, there is a opportunity made available to uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people um, to undergo whatever training is necessary to enable them uh, to uh, uh, hold that position on an ongoing basis. Um, I do hope that you will support this because there is a deficiency. The City of Adelaide employs um, uh, just 10 Indigenous people. Uh, the, uh, uh, the figure represents about 1% of our total employment, whereas in the state of South Australia, um, Aboriginal uh, population is around about 2%. So we are actually about half um, uh, the, uh, the population makeup in the broader community. Um, I think it behoves uh, this council and all government in South Australia to pursue policies like this that make opportunities available to Indigenous Australians. Um, I urge you to support it. Three of them. Just a point of clarification, 1.6% of our permanent workforce, that's the figure I've been told. Um, CEO, um, I understand that, uh, but we have 10 employees and we have employees uh, who are full-time, part-time, who Paul number... Paul now, I mean, he spoke, the, he's debating the CEO. No, no, I'm asking for clarification. That's from the Lord Mayor to allow the question. Oh, okay. Oh, well, Lord Mayor, may, may I seek clarification? Uh, yes, you may, Councillor Martin. The most recent statistics provided uh, to councillors said that there were in excess of 1,000 employees, full-time, part-time, contractors and others, and that we engage 10 Indigenous employees. Uh, that is the calculation of 1%. Is that not correct? Yep. Three of me. I'm classifying 1.6% based on our permanent workforce. Okay, but so not all positions. Not all. Not, not correct. All time. Thank you. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I commend Councillor Martin for putting this forward. I think this is a really um, good and important initiative. Um, you know, we often talk about um, the influence we can have 
um, at this level of government. This is something very concrete and tangible that we can do and that is within our remit. Um, and it has the potential to make a, a big difference. So I urge councillors to vote for this motion. I think it would be a terrible look for this council if we passed up this opportunity. And um, I think it is a, a opportunity for us to make a big difference to improve Aboriginal employment in the city of Adelaide, but also in our state. The city of Adelaide is a significant employer and um, we must do better when it comes to employing Aboriginal people. And I think what Councillor Martin has put forward is a, a really good direction um, for us to take going forward. So I urge all members to put political differences aside and to vote for this issue because it is uh, really important. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I will not be supporting this motion. Oh. And the uh, reason I will not be supporting the motion is for the following reasons. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the hard work of the administration that are already implementing uh, these plans. And this is exactly the job of the CEO. It is not the job for the elected body to dictate who we employ. It isn't at all. We employ one person under the Act, and under the Act, that person is the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of the City of Adelaide then he has an obligation through our strategic plan, through our reconciliation committees, through our action plans, to take the intent of council and implement that through the organisation. I believe this is an overreach from councillors and elected body into the organisation to dictate how things happen within the organisation, especially when these things are already occurring. And if these things weren't occurring, and we had the point of the CEO and the administration in shame for not doing the work, that's a separate issue altogether. And that's a discussion that I would appreciate councillors to have with the CEO privately, confidentially say, look, CEO, we need to work together as a team to make sure we present to the public the impacts and the effects of our policies and strategies. We believe you are not meeting those objectives. And if the CEO is not meeting those objectives, guess what? We've got a way to do that through the CEO performance panel. We can speak to the CEO through the performance panel and make sure that the CEO has those implementations as part of his target. So this is one idea where a councillor wants to interfere in the process of employment of council. There'll be many ideas and we might as well then have some of the councillors resign, become the CEO of the administration and run the whole place. And I'm sure that will satisfy them. Members do not support this because it's already being done and our CEO and our councillors and our council staff are doing an incredible job at the Liberty. Members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Um, well, Lord Mayor, I'm speechless. I'm shocked that the Deputy Lord Mayor of the City of Adelaide would pass up an opportunity to address the disadvantage, the poor opportunities for the employment of Indigenous Australians in Australia. We are a council employing fewer people than we should employ. We are setting a bad example, and the Deputy Lord Mayor is setting a worse example by refuting the opportunity, by rejecting the opportunity to do something about it. Now, this, this motion simply asks for a report by February. The Lord, Deputy Lord Mayor doesn't want a report on Indigenous employment by February. I, can, I cannot believe how pig-headed this block voting system is. It does not allow for the consideration of reasonable, rational proposals. A proposal that is part of our policy. Our policy commits us to employing 1.8% Aboriginal uh, 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 employees by 2021. That is our policy. And it says we will do so by offering apprenticeships and traineeships. That's our policy. But there's no mechanism in here that says, how will that operate? How will we reach our target by 2021? That's what that report asks for. It says, can you please show us the scheme that will help us to meet our policy objectives? This is actually real policy. This is what councils do. Real councils don't debate like block votes 
like the, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor is telling, signalling to his colleagues. And I'll exclude Councillor Kiros, by the way, since I complained about block voting. She's not been block voting as much. And I commend her example to the rest of the team. It is a really good practice. I, I urge you, I beg you, to adopt what is a reasonable measure by any standard to assist in tackling Indigenous disadvantage in Australia, in South Australia and in Adelaide. Do not follow the direction of the Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, Division. that is carried. Council's division has been called to the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please rise and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Martin, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Moran, and Councillor Sims. Uh, members, that takes us to 15.8, Councillor Kuros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I take it that uh, that's as read. Look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Um, so, uh, sorry, the board member not feeling very well tonight. Um, the motion is this motion here is to facilitate um, for our main, main streets, predominantly for um, O'Connor Street and Melbourne Street, and also Hutt Street, um, whereby businesses and commercial property, property owners can engage um, with a contact and can facilitate discussions um, for their main street. We are all too aware of the high rate of vacancies, the requirement of mixed retail, street needs, and the constant difficulties that businesses face to survive in today's economy. Each of our main streets are unique and having um, a point of um, contact that engages with these business, businesses almost daily um, and drives towards outcomes that brings out the uniqueness of these streets. Uh, so they're supported and initiatives are, deli de are delivered. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Corbis. Councillor Hine. Thank you, just briefly in support. I think this uh, would be an excellent initiative, having uh, dealing with my own precinct groups um, and uh, knowing that I myself have to assist them in wading through many aspects of our administration. Um, I think a single point of contact in the administration um, would be incredibly useful for them in getting the information they need in a timely manner um, uh, and ensuring that as well they are able to get messages through to us. Um, about resourcing that they potentially need. Councillor Moran, please. Um, we saw uh, at, a, at a recent committee what happens when um, uh, when you don't engage your, your precinct groups and your main streets um, uh, very well and messages get lost in communication and that miscommunication um, uh, causes issues that we then have to go and um, deal with ourselves. So I think the single point of contact would go a long way to uh, helping us work with our main street precincts better. Thank you, members. Councillor Martin. Look, uh, Lord Mayor, I, I think I can help Councillor Kouros um, with a, a small amendment, um, uh, and it is that uh, at 2.1, we just add the words um, engagement model um, for council consideration. So it comes to council. So if Councillor Kouros is not happy with it, um, uh, it can be addressed and take out the words of O'Connell, Melbourne and Hutt Streets. Um, and Councillor Moran has agreed to second that. I know you weren't looking more than me, so I thought I'd look good. Councillor Moran, did you second that? Yeah. Um, look, I, I agree with uh, uh, Councillor Kouros. I, you know, I think that's an excellent idea to have a single point of contact. But to address the point that uh, uh, Councillor Hyde raised, um, he has resident groups and uh, business groups that he's concerned about in his ward. They are not referenced here. Um, by taking out O'Connell, Melbourne and Hutt Streets, it does provide an opportunity to provide a contact point for uh, the West End Precinct Association, the East End, the South West Residents, the South East Residents, the Guja Street, Grote Street and Chinatown communities. So it's much more encompassing. And, and while I do understand that she wants to embrace North Adelaide communities, Melbourne Street and O'Connell Street, I think as a council we have an obligation to engage all of our communities, business and residential groups, who come from those areas as well. Um, and the single point of contact um, would be a great idea. 
Um, so often I hear from uh, precinct groups and resident groups that they just don't know who to approach in council. Um, is it still this person or that person or whatever? Um, this would solve that issue. There would be a name, a telephone number, and they can respond to it. All of them, not just those three groups. And uh, Councillor Kouros, by uh, uh, adding the words for uh, council consideration, allows for the refinement that she might wish to add to it, um, any detail in relation to specific communities or specific actions. Um, I think uh, that amendment, and uh, I do hope you'll forgive me for adding those things, but I think that does help it enormously. Councillor Moran. Uh, uh, Councillor Hyde. Um, yeah, just a quick question. Uh, so it would, um, we're sort of singling out a couple of women at uh, it would just be each of the Main Street communities. Um, would you just be able to remind us which Main Street communities there are? I've, I've got most of them in my mind. I just, um, just oh, I'm happy to do that. I'll do it. Uh, no, thank you. Yes, I think the question's been directed to the administration. Well, no, there are Main Street and Main Street. Um, through you, Lord Mayor. Ian, do we have a, a list? Of oh, Matt Grant, I have it in the gallery today. Sorry, through the Chair, yeah, don't have a list on me, but I think uh, I have had a conversation with the Deputy CEO about this type of new approach to the model because there are multiple touch points in council dealing with both residential and, and business issues. Um, whilst there is a single point of contact in NKDEV, the precinct groups, that doesn't always marry with some of the other um, interest groups that interact with council. So we're pretty open to looking at a new model of how we do provide a single point of contact that cuts across the many touch points of council, if that makes sense. So it's not so we could look at main streets, we could look at precinct groups, we look at uh, residential groups, and so there are many different points of uh, entry into our organisation, and I think that's, that's as I understand the motion, um, Claire and I have had a chat about what is a better model to service that requirement from our rate payers, whether they be residents or business. May I comment? It's that um, um, I've been um, talking with Councillor Kouros on this motion and with the Deputy CEO. Um, the uh, the single point of contact uh, is actually specific for the reason it had O'Connell, Melbourne and Hunt Streets is because they are the master plans that are in our strategic plan to deliver. And that allows us in the same way that Hindley Street has allowed us to have a single point while we're actually going through that consultation process and working with everybody in those main streets. Um, obviously, the precinct groups have their own coordinator, which is Sue. She's their single point of contact through Echo Development. Um, and the neighbourhoods have their single point of contact, which is through our community and culture team, um, and which is Amy Bacconi. Um, this is specific to those main streets, and, and uh, in particular, because those three main streets are where we're about to actually go out and try and do the uh, master plan development. Um, the only other single point of contact, we, we used to have this in process when we had the placemaking team here and the placemaking team would all take different areas of the, the city. Um, um, and I think um, Councillor Cross, you have some information on Mason too, which um, you'll get to, okay, thanks. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor. I was just going to, oh sorry. Um, just quickly, um, the way I read the original motion was focused on main streets. This encompasses precincts, and it might be that that's where the intention of the mover is. Um, I'm just a little bit unclear because I, I guess the, from a Main Street engagement perspective, I've seen that happen before where we've developed a placemaking strategy and policies through those Main Street processes. This starts to talking about precinct group, Chinatown, uh, but that's not the intention of the motion from what I read it. I'm just wanting some clarification from Councillor Kuros if that is their intention. Because if it is, I'm happy to support it, but if it's not, then we'll just get it. Can I just get that clarified? Councillor Kuros, would you like to clarify the intention of the motion? The intention of this motion is to focus on those three main streets. Um, they are in, in sort of, they need some support. We're talking about. Just, that, that's the intention of the all. Yeah. But I'll, I'll then, in that case, so there's been an. In speaking to the amendment, I think we've got the moment the precinct review model that we're discussing, which will pick up the precinct group discussion and how we manage that. I think this is more of a sort of a task force 
task force approach specifically around three main streets that the motion wants to target. And if that's the intention of the mover, then I'm happy to support the original motion. Mind you, I do understand what Councillor Martin's saying, but I think we can pick that up as part of the precinct uh, review group, which we're currently doing at the moment. So just in summing up to that, um, I would not, I, would not, I won't, unless there's something clarified, I won't be supporting the amendment, I'll support the original, and then I'm happy to take some of those remarks as part of the, uh, the precinct review model. Um, yes, Lord Mayor, look, I, I do understand now that the issue is with the wording um, and I understand Councillor Kouros's intention uh, and it's been clarified uh, by the Deputy Lord Mayor. So I'm happy to vary it to accommodate her specific request. So the engagement model acknowledges strengths, uh, opportunities and risks of main streets to streamline the planning and delivery of key initiatives associated with the master planning process approved by council, work alongside local Main Street representatives to ensure that the unique identity of individual places is Sorry, that was a further amendment, Councillor Martin. No, I'm just... saying I'm happy to vary that if that would help the chamber. No, I actually want to keep my original motion. I'm okay. quite happy with the way it is. The intention there is to follow the same model that we have. With we've got Mason Willis. Um, he's a single point of contact for Hunley Street. Um, he's enabled to, um, you know, work with a short-term investment program that's now underway. Um, and uh, you know, the communication is uh, that he's offering into that street has been very vital. And uh, I want it just to be focused um, on those streets, and not just not just because they're having a master planning, but just as an overall um, support of, for a single point of contact. Just, I just don't think that that would achieve what you're wanting. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. No, no, actually. No, no, no. You're actually confusing me, Councillor Martin. I just want to keep it to the motion, to where it is, for what it was for, um, and for those three main streets. Um. Well, Lord Mayor, I'm, I'm happy to amend it. The, the motion that's before this chamber is that we're going to develop... Are you summing up, Councillor Martin? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm happy to sum up. Um, look, uh, Lord Mayor, the motion that's before uh, the amendment, I had hoped would address the issue, uh, and I am happy to withdraw it and go back to the other motion, but I won't be able to support that because what Councillor Kouros is uh, proposing is for our city community an engagement model that's not even coming back to council that acknowledges and responds to the strengths and risks of local neighbourhoods that is all local neighbourhoods uh, and main streets it doesn't say O'Connell Street, Melbourne Street or Hutt Street it then says work alongside local neighbourhood and main street representatives it doesn't say which uh, I'm assuming um, it's uh, broad and then it goes to the bottom point and says point a single contact person for those three. Um, I'm quite confused. Um, so look, I'll withdraw my amendment and I, I hope the administration can work out what Councillor Kouros was proposing. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, we'll go... So, sorry, Councillor... Moran, you're right. So you you approved to withdraw the amendment? Yeah. Correct. Thank you. So members, we'll go back to the original motion. Are there any other speakers? If not, I will go back to Councillor Kouros to sum up. I've been told that it's been a pretty long night just to sum up, but um, I I understand. I think I understand what you're. Saying Councillor Martin, but I'm not 100% understanding. No, I don't what you're saying. Sure. But I'm I'm staying with this motion because it is something that it, it we need to concentrate on those three main streets and uh, you know uh, all other precincts. Um, you know, uh, if you want to bring them forward in another motion, that's up to you. But there are my concerns at the moment. Members will go to the vote. Those in favour, those against. That is carried. Uh, members, we are nearly there. We have three motions left. Councillor Kouros, 15.9, review of Christmas in the city. 
seek a second to Councillor Hyde. Sorry, I saw Councillor Kouros. <laughs> Oh, well, um, just from the administration's comments, we are entering into another um, five-year plan. Um, so I guess that's underway. I think I jumped the gun a little bit on this one. Um, I look forward to working on an action plan for um, you know for the next five years for Christmas. I think we can do a lot more for our city. Um, I understand there's budget implications in doing so, and I'm, I'm happy. You know, I look forward to working through those as well. What we can do and how we do it, we can do it better. My my aim for this, um, my concern for the Christmas in cities, obviously, is to bring it back for the retailers. I want more support for the retailers regarding this time of year. I think we can they can do a lot with their windows, and just want to know what we do and what we can do for them, and also for our city in regards to lighting, um, bringing more people into our city. We've done a great, it was a great event, lighting of the Christmas tree. That, it's fantastic. I think over 8,000 people came along to that event. Um, but it just would have been great if the city was open, they could have done some shopping, if they could have. But hey, I'm open to a lot of suggestions and uh, and workshopping this with uh, my colleagues. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today. Why not, Lord Mayor? Even the Greens in me is, is excited about this uh, this motion. I'm uh, very much looking forward to the uh, to the workshop, and I commend Councillor Gross for bringing this uh, to the chamber. Thank you, members. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, I just want to um, reiterate: this is something we've done previously. Um, I don't want a body of work and a waste of time that's going to come back from administration to council without detailed budgets that potentially council may need to consider as part of its long-term financial plan. I understand the stuff costs a lot of money. And if council is committed to delivering a Christmas strategy for the city that positions Adelaide as the Christmas capital of Australia, that, that is great, but we've got to put our money where our mouth is. So I think it's really important that that comes through the report CEO to understand what is the funding, what is the economic development and the social development outcomes, uh, but also most importantly, understanding how we will fund it and potentially partnership with the state government and tourism. Councillor Canal. And uh, just to follow on, I suppose we are looking at uh, you know the city management plan, and I think this is again you know, Christmas and and uh, activations within the city is also part of that when they're bringing people in, and it is about the business, but it's also about our social aspects. So I think it's important that it does we spread it over not just uh, at the council. But actually, the business community as well through the new structures we're looking at putting in. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm I'm happy to um, support this. I'm I'm always happy to support good ideas, um, particularly when they're issues of passion um, for uh, other elected members. I don't uh, care who puts forward good ideas. I'm happy to um, support them, and I'm very happy to um, support. Um, getting a report done if someone thinks that it's um, worthwhile. So, um, in that spirit, um, I'm not sure what I've said that is so provocative, um, but in that spirit, um, perhaps I've hit a nerve. In that spirit, I'm happy to support it, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hyde. Um, thank you. I echo the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor's um, views around budgets. Of course, we did approve um, a vast sum of money in our budget. Uh, for this financial year for Christmas, and yet it, it uh, is interesting that we see the same decorations coming out as I had last year. So I'm not sure what capital expenditure there's been um, on new decorations, uh, but it certainly isn't there on Hutt Street or in any other part of the city that I've seen. Um, so I would really love to crack that open um, and have a look at it. And I'll, I'll foreshadow this now. One, one thing I would be keen to see as well is I know in, in the previous term of council, uh, uh, it was hard fought to get an actual nativity scene there under the Christmas tree. Oh, no. um, oh, no. uh, I would note that it is a two-dimensional nativity scene. Um, and uh, while I don't, uh, while I'm no longer on paper um, a Christian, um, I would say that uh, amongst all the consumerism that uh, surrounds us at Christmas time, um, it, it would be nice to have in there a reminder of of what it is about, and I, not necessarily the birth of, of uh, little baby Jesus, but uh, something a little bit more altruistic. Um, uh, certainly, last Christmas Day, I was joined by uh, uh, Councillor Abrahimza Day and uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor at uh, the Hutt Street Centre, 
Um, so, you know, if there can be, uh, in fact, if, if a proper nativity scene can at least remind us of the other aspects of Christmas, not just consumerism, um, uh, then I think uh, that would be worthy of consideration in this forthcoming strategy. Councillor Martin. Yeah, just a couple of uh, uh, quick questions, and I, you, you will note I'm resisting the opportunity to respond. But uh, can the administration clarify? Christmas decorations have been added to the main precinct areas, O'Connell Street, Melbourne Street, and so on. Thanks, uh, my It's my understanding it was an investment of about $600,000 from the City of Adelaide into a range of Christmas activities, which include um, things like lighting of the Christmas tree, support for um, some beautifying the city through, uh, and, and um, material that is flags, flies, and, and that sort of, and the like, as well as support through Cent Central Market Arcade, which is a separate budget and the subsidiary, and also the Under More Management Authority. Did the decorations go up when Councillor Hyde was on his junket on Friday, so he missed it? Uh, oh, no, I, sorry, I beg your pardon. Um, one further question. Uh, the Rundle Mall decorations are funded directly by Council? They're funded through the subsidiary. Through the Rundle Mall Management Authority. Correct. Thank you very much for that. Members? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Um, don't need to complicate it. Um, just basically, let's look at the budget. Just look at what we've been doing. Just look at what we can do better. I've constantly been told by my ratepayers that would love more lights in North Adelaide. Um, the same is said in a, in a, in a yeah, nodding ahead. The same is said in, in, in the South, and uh, we would love to bring Christmas and stretch it all out. But hey, let's just look at what we've been doing. And I would really like to see um, the breakdown of the costing, if possible, for everything that we do in that workshop. And maybe that there are some things that we need to not do and could do better. And, and uh, work, work it a lot more. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? Did you call a division? Oh, yes. Just Sorry, no, it was yeah. just unanimous vote and it was a little joke because we're getting towards the end of the evening. Um, Councillors, we have got 15.10, uh, Councillor Kouros, unsolicited unsolicited bid deadline. Look for a seconder, I think Councillor Hyde's got his hand up, sorry. Um, Councillor Corris. Do, uh, I won't read that out. We've talked about it uh, all night tonight and uh, we've had our theatrics and we've had our political grandstanding and we've had, you know, the threat that you won't get re-elected and we had it all tonight and I congratulate on the performances of my fellow councillors. But this is just a really simple motion. I understand that Councillor Sims has um, for, uh, foreshadowed an amendment, which I won't agree to. Um, so um, this motion is basically just to tell the Adelaide Football Club to hurry up because it's really getting boring hearing the same things in the paper and the same motions and, you know, people telling these or bright ideas, or I don't know if they're bright ideas, but these horrendous ideas of what it would look like, what they're going to build there, and what's going to happen, and it's going to be fenced off, and we've got little poster posters all around the aquatic centre, and we've got little bows around trees saying save, save it, and it's like it's just creating chaos for what? For something that we don't even know anything about. So it's, it's the, the one thing with this unsolicited process is that that's annoying, several things that are annoying me, but the one thing is there's no deadline. It just keeps going on and on and on. So putting in a, can Councillor Moran not speak? No. When I'm speaking, is that, is that a point of order here? Can she be told to actually? Councillor Cross, yes, continue. Councillor Moran, please. Thank you. So basically, Forwarding the uh, proposal with, it, oh, well, telling them to put in their proposal and Councillor Sims. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I'm just trying to find something on the agenda. Can you actually allow to talk? Oh, Thank you, Councillor Kouros. If they don't submit their proposal by that time, then we can say, forget it. Um, and what I'm really, really eager to actually have is the needs analysis report as well. Um, that is, you know, something that I would, 
you know, really keen to to have. Um, and so I know it's everything's just taking time to be done, and I really just want to get this done before we end the year. Thank you, Councillor Corus. Councillor Hyde. I think we can see. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think this motion um, uh, hits the nail on the head and gets the balance right. Uh, it talks about the needs analysis, which is actually what we need to have in our hands for us to make a decision um, uh, on what might need to go on that side. But also it, gives, it allows us to give that to the community um, to say, uh, these are all the various competing needs. Uh, what would you like to see at the Aquatic Centre? And it allows them to do that alongside um, this proposal, which finally gets it out into the open, a proposal which we haven't seen. What is going to be released here on the 10th of December is not what we've seen. It's, it's, it's considering how, how primordial that was, the things, sorry, the things. Um, uh, what is coming on the 10th of December um, is going to be more progressed and it will be able to be given to the public and looked at alongside the needs analysis to tell them or to, so, so they are informed, so they have everything at their disposal to give effective um, uh, and meaningful uh, public feedback. And then we can take that decision uh, and then uh, progress to various options. Um, so, like I said, this gets the balance right. It has all the elements in there, the needs analysis, um, uh, more or less an ultimatum to the, to the uh, Adelaide Crows. Um, and uh, finally, uh, we get to release this to the public um, uh, and shed some light on the process, which I'm actually very much myself looking forward to as well. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I wish to move an amendment, and I have circulated it through to councillors and administration. I don't like to ambush people at the meeting. Why not? Why not? That's what everyone else does. Oh, sorry, Councillor Sims. Are you replacing part three with your part three? Though? Uh, yes, that's right. And then the next so one should which, be four. Which one five. is the part three? No, no, sorry, it's just a numbering error. So okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll look for a second. Then. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And um, look, I. I you know, can see what Councillor Kouros is trying to achieve here, but it, it does miss the mark um, for me, and, and that's why I'm moving an amendment. Um, Councillor Kouros, you know, talked about stunts um, before, um, before launching into a giant political stunt herself, because, um, of course, this creates the impression of an open-ended consultation, but really it's a closed consultation. And what, one of the things that really concerns me about um, Councillor Kouros's emotion is point three launches a public consultation on both, to, oh, on both meaning above, to help determine the scale and service offering of a new state-of-the-art Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Now, the term state-of-the-art Adelaide Aquatic Centre is the term that was used in the Adelaide Crow's own press release when they announced their uh, plans. So by inserting that phrase into the consultation, what Councillor Kouros is doing is actually tailoring the consultation to try and get a particular outcome. It's manufacturing consent in that way. What I am seeking to do is to broaden the consultation process. What I'm asking for is concepts and options to be developed Councillor by the Councillor Kouros, please. But what I'm also asking for is for our administration to prepare alternatives for consideration by the public that don't involve the Crows taking ownership of our aquatic centre so that the community have options to consider so that we're not locked into a situation where we say we're going to consult on what is the best way to get a state-of-the-art facility and um, also what i want to do is ask the community whether or not they support the bid from the adelaide crows and if they do what's their preferred model so it's a much more open consultation and also I put in there some public meetings to ensure that we get to hear directly from residents and ratepayers. And I've also stipulated that it needs a 12 week period so that we can ventilate all views. And um, I know Councillor Kouros has said here, if it does not receive the above, it reserves the right to not accept the Adelaide um, Crow's proposal. Lord Mayor, we've been told that we don't have to accept the proposal at any time. Indeed, I think um, the, the refrain in this council chamber is we can reject it at any time. So we should note that we reserve the right to not accept the Adelaide Football Club proposal at any time, irrespective of whether, and whether or not they meet these requirements. So look, I think my um, motion, my amendment adds a bit more flesh on the bones um, in terms of guiding the consultation process 
giving the community the opportunity rather than locking them in to a narrow consultation process about do you want the crows to uh, meet the uh, outcome that they or the, uh, the aim that they have set for themselves. Um, and I don't think that's the best way to approach consultation. Let's have something more open. Councillor Moran. Uh, right. Councillor Hyde. Just a question to the CEO um, uh, on this amendment. Request that the admin prepare at least three options for provision of aquatic facilities. Um, has the needs analysis been completed yet? Three, Lord Mayor. Thanks for the question. It's good to provide some fact as to where we're up to. Um, first of all, can I just say the council itself has prohibited the Adelaide Football Club from um, undertaking any consultation on their on their concepts and has had total control of this process from the beginning through um, through the participation framework, which we agreed to. The Adelaide Crows have obeyed that requirement and have not circulated any plans because council require that to be the case. We've undertaken to progress the needs analysis using our external consultant. That external consultant is undertaking the needs analysis to total exclusion of the Adelaide Football Club proposal. So the needs analysis is being undertaken for our aquatic centre for our purposes. That will definitely have a number of options within it. And those options will need to be considered very carefully by the council in due course. So the re recommendation tonight is that both um, the Adelaide Football Club be required to submit and that the needs analysis be tabled is achievable um, um, and it is progressing um, in a very reasonable way at this time. Um, I think it's important for council to know that that's the work that's been undertaken by the administration and I'm um, happy to take any further questions. So progressing in a reasonable way, but it's not yet, it's not yet done, it's not ready yet. Through Lord Mayor, I met today with the consultant dealing with the needs analysis. Um, I believe that he's able to commit to delivering in time. I must say that the needs analysis process ordinarily takes a very long time to put together because there's a lot of engagement, a lot of considerations to be made, a lot of comparisons, a lot of data. Um, that has been pulled together very rapidly um, and I'm very pleased to see the progress being made so far. Interesting. And um, through you, Lord Mayor, uh, is the CEO of the opinion that given the needs analysis is not yet complete, um, that he will and his administration will be able to design three different aquatic centres and present them to the public in January consultation? Through Lord Mayor, I just need to clarify, it won't be designed three options. It will be talk about three, I would imagine two or three variations of what an aquatic facility would look like and could look like in the future. I think this council needs to really have a close look at that um, because there's been a lot of debate over many years about the future of the aquatic centre um, at the exclusion of the Adelaide Football Club proposal. And I believe as a council, uh, we really need to spend some time considering what model of aquatic facility we need to provide to our community going forward. Would the needs analysis itself have those various options in it or not? Um, I believe that the, the options are, be, are quite obvious um, and I'm, I'm sure that the needs analysis will quite clearly outline the various models that are available. There are, there are only two or three models that will be suitable for the aquatic center. Okay, so that, that will be in the needs analysis that then goes out anyway, regardless? It will be, and I need to say that I will be committing to providing that information, information to Council, hopefully before the 10th, so that you actually see it before it's tabled in a formal Council. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran. Uh, yeah, look, just to um, uh, say that this is um, a much better, uh, a greatly improved motion now. Um, of course, we the, the other was um, really just flagging what's already happening. Um, we, uh, of course, reserve the right not to accept the Adelaide Football Club's proposal at any time. And I'd like to flag now that I, I, I don't, will not be accepting one. I think it's a shocking thing that we're doing. Um, there are many, uh, we're putting, also, we're putting the cart before the horse, aren't we? I mean, we should have done the needs analysis. We should be looking at that. They should have the needs analysis. Um, there are lots of other options for the Aquatic Centre. Um, we first built it as an open air pool for our residents. 
Um, it was then uh, covered by the federal government to become an elite swimming facility, training facility. So uh, most councils just provide, it also replaced, when it went to North Adelaide, the um, city baths. And um, I think it was for some that said, and I pretty agreed that um, if, we, if we are going to get rid of the aquatic centre when it dies, as when it becomes end of life, we should really put it back in the city. Um, as was the city baths and make it a central feature of um, on the riverbank. Um, so that's an option that I would really like to promote. If the, if the aquatic centre is coming down, it is in parklands, let's put that back to parklands. We could put the uh, beach volleyball there for a while or something, anyway. Um, but it doesn't have the crows, we, we seem to think that they're the only um, port in the storm. Um, I would have thought that the state government would be very pleased to help us fund a city bars on the riverbank um, as an enormous attractor to um, that area. And I know that previous councils have really supported that and I know the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor was one of those that was excited by that prospect. Uh, the other is that we replace it with an open air pool, um, which as a Hayeswood Park pool. We don't need to be um, all year round now. We can slightly heat the pools and get training there. That's an option too. Hazelwood Park run is a lovely pool and runs at um, above break even. So we wouldn't have to make it point of order, Councillor, it actually makes, uh, there's a contribution of $396,000 from the Burnside Council to the operation of the Burnside pool. That's to do the heating, but that's an optional extra. So if it's just run as an outside pool. <laughs> no, it's actually for the operations of the centre. Well, look, I, I really can't take your word for that because I spoke to some councils at the Burnside Council and they said because it isn't an enclosed heated pool, that it is fairly cost, is cost effective, was their words. Uh, okay, but, through um, the rates notice. It's funny so how you I have haven't. these figures. Just no, no, well I, well, I actually have it because I brought the rates notice from Burnside Council in uh, um, for a, yeah, to show Anyway, you as I was saying, that far is it far less if, if that's to be taken at face value than what we lose at the Aquatic Centre every year. Um, so there are other options. We don't need the crows. I say, say no now. I don't know why we even started this. We never checked with our public. We never asked the ratepayers. We just blundered along. And Mary's motion just totally presupposes approval. She's not saying, should we build one? Should we give it to the crows? She's saying, how can we, what, how should we design it? Thank and you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Councillors. Thank you, councillors. We you. don't want the aquatic centre to be given to the crows, Mary. You're not yeah. listening. Thank you, councillor Moran. Um, the CEO had a point of clarification. Mayor, one thing I did omit to say is that what we plan to do is to bring to you a community engagement plan that will fully outline the process and the methods we will use, the duration. Um, it'll be quite a detailed plan that you will, as a council, fully need to consider and agree to before we commence. Just that's part of the process that we're going forward. Uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, look, this is uh, great news that so much information, uh, so many reports are coming to us for our last meeting on December 10th. Um, just before Christmas, uh, so that we can release all this information and people uh, cannot be informed because they'll be on holidays. That's why this, this motion is a superior motion. It provides for a longer consultation. Um, it actually meets all of the requirements that the CEO outlined in terms of canvassing the future of an aquatic centre, if there is to be one, if Team Adelaide will agree to it. Now, uh, I do acknowledge uh, Councillor Kouros is correct. Um, this whole process has created chaos, uh, although I, I do say that she and the team have contributed enormously to that. But uh, to the, uh, the, the particular point, uh, that is that it is proposed that the needs analysis and the Crow's detailed concepts, um, which Councillor Hyde seems to understand are effective and meaningful will be released at the same time as the needs analysis is in fact the intellectual floor in all of this that everybody seems to have overlooked. That is to say that the Crows will release on December 10th or at least that's when they'll be publicly available their detailed concepts. 
That is, within that space of land, which Council's already determined has to be less than the current footprint, there will be club facilities, administration facilities, and an aquatic centre. Uh, the aquatic centre's shape and size is already determined. That's, that's what is coming to us. And there is a needs analysis coming to us at the same time. And the needs analysis will be constrained by the design that comes to us. That's the intellectual flaw in all of this. Because if the needs analysis says, as many community groups have said to me, we need a world-class water polo facility, we need an Olympic length swimming pool, and the Crows have designed an aquatic facility that is 10 metres by 10 metres, it won't fit. And that is the intellectual flaw. We are preparing to receive the detailed plans of the Crows for that site and a needs analysis, which probably won't be able to accommodate what's in there. Now, I've said it before, if you think people are silly enough to believe that this isn't a done deal, I, I tell you, I, I just can't believe the stupidity in this. There is a done deal that's being presented to the people of Adelaide and South Australia on the 10th. It is the plan for the aquatic centre that they will get according to what the crows want. And if it marries up with the needs analysis, that'll be even more suspicious. Um, members, this is the superior motion. It provides real alternatives not the sop to the crows that was proposed. Councillors. Uh, Councillor Hyde. Just one question. question. Sorry, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. Question. Question. Do you want to speak before I ask my question? You really want to? Okay, okay sure. <laughs> uh, Lord Mayor, um, it's very clear to me that Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims and Councillor Martin don't want to see a Crows facility on the Adelaide Park. Do you? It's yeah. very clear. Do you? It is very, very clear that that's their position. And they've made their position very public and very clear that no matter what it looks like, no matter what happened, they are not interested. Despite the fact that Councillor Moran told us before in the previous council, she moved the motion to ask the CEO to speak to the Crows to bring them to the city. And in this council, she went publicly by saying for the Crows, please go to the aquatic centre, not to the nursery. These are pop this is public information. Now Council Moran has changed her mind. She's entitled to change her mind. Change mind. But the fact remains is, is very clear that those three councillors don't want to see it. Now, there is myself, I can speak for myself and myself alone, I want to be able to see something happen on that site that delivers on a community outcome. That for me is the most important part of this process. Um, that for me is what I want to see and that's exactly what I want to do. I'm not going to, I don't trust those councillors. They want to sabotage the process. They don't want it. And they'll do everything they can with monkey organisations on the outside to make sure that process happens. But the most important thing about this, where I need to remind councillors when they talk about their constituents, about a part of what? What are we talking about? 30% of people that voted the last government elections? Want to consult to every time we want to do something? I am oh, elected to make a decision God. on behalf of the right council, the city of Adelaide. Oh. There are, there are 7,000 ratepayers in North Adelaide councillors and in speaking to the ward councillors, 500 votes is not representative of 7,000 people. 500 votes is not representative of 25,000 people, nor 1.7 million South Australians. We have an obligation as councillors to make decisions. We're not here representatives and we consult every step of the way. If people are unhappy with the decisions of this council, they have, a, they have an opportunity in three years' time to vote those people out and vote people back in. They're entitled to do that. That's democracy. For now, Fortunately or unfortunately for some of the councillors, this is the law of the land. And the law of the land is clear. I want to be able to see very clearly a community outcome from this process. If there isn't a community outcome from this process, I will not support it. I don't care about the commercial aspect. I don't care if they want to make money. That's not the intention. They can do that provided they deliver on a community outcome. To this stage, I haven't seen it. No one has. No one has. And anyone else that will say they've seen details, they're lying. 
They are lying and they're fabricating because for them, what is the most Lord, important Lord Mayor, thing? I've just been called a liar. I object yeah. strongly. People, people, I, I object. Justice. I would like an apology for Your that. Point of I order is... to you ever in my life, I will never apologise to you. I'm going to death if I apologise to you. Um, just if I could have two more minutes, Lord Mayor, that's okay. Chamber. No. Two more minutes? Yes, you've got two more minutes. The most important thing in this process, and this is why I don't support this, is because I don't trust the intent of the mover. Uh, Councillor Sims, Councillor Moran and Councillor Martin, you can move whatever you like when it comes to this process until it's concluded. I will not support it because your intention is clear. You don't want this to occur. My intention as a councillor to why I will not support this is to make sure that if this was to occur, it must have community dividends attached to it that are significant for me to support it. Until this stage, I have not seen community benefit or a commercial benefit. I have seen absolutely nothing. And until that day comes, I will not support anything that comes from those three councillors. So put it in your ear and fold it and listen to it very clearly. I will not be backing anything that will sabotage that process because your intentions are clear. Nothing. That is your intention. Vote for no. That's the council you stand well, for. Lord Mayor, I'm Sit down, councillor. I am not done. Sit down. I am not done, councillor. Councillor, I am not done. Sit down. I didn't come to the meeting to be abused. You can handle it, councillor. You've got thick skin. You can handle it. It's okay. It's okay. Can... Councillors, do not support. Do not support this motion. Support the substantive. Let's get the proposal in. And if there is no community benefit in it, I am with the councillors that do not back it. That's the promise I'll give you. Oh, you never voted with us again, Councillor Hyde. Just for clarity, um, could uh, three Lord Mayor, could CEO please provide his interpretation of what uh, Part One, their proposed facility, means? Just, where, just, where just, is in, that? just in the in part one when we're talking about since deadline for AFC to submit detailed concept for their proposed facility, just in line of the allegations that were made, which were not corrected or clarified, that we're getting a prepaid baked cake. That's from Mary's motion. No, so I know that's from Mary's yeah. motion. It's also in yours, and, and I want to know how the CEO interprets that because I interpret that to mean the components of whatever is built on part two that AFC would be using as separate from. Uh, the aquatic services. Yeah. Services that. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. My understanding is that um, the de detailed concepts would include a provision for an aquatic facility as well as provision for Adelaide Football Club facilities as well. What it doesn't do is provide any detail, I don't imagine because we haven't seen it yet, um, because there is no needs analysis to prove that. So that's the dilemma we have. So, so my interpretation of it, and I'm just consciously treading around confidentiality here, and you may need to as well. My interpretation of it is that um, they will they will give us sort of what they either want or need or are proposing, um, and we will have uh, flexibility, or there will be a, a site established for what we may want, and the needs analysis will then inform us, and feed, be, feedback from the public will then inform us. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, it is difficult to talk in, in open session about that. All I can tell you is that Council has 100% control of this process. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Kouros. Oh, uh, sorry, yeah. Councillor Sims. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, really, this is a choice between a genuine consultation, which I'm proposing, or a faux consultation one that looks like a consultation but is actually constrained, that is designed to get the outcome that Councillor Kouros, Councillor Abiad, Councillor Abrahimzada, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kira all want, which was a corporate takeover of our public land. Now, the Deputy Lord Mayor says that he won't support anything I put forward because I don't support the Crows proposal. Well, I've been pretty clear. I've been pretty clear. He doesn't support anything I've put forward in 12 months, Lord Mayor, so no change. But let me be clear. I make no apologies for standing up for public land 
and for fighting for the community's right to know. And the Deputy Lord Mayor sits here and says, oh, well, you know, we make all the decisions. We make all the decisions. The community shouldn't have a voice. They shouldn't have a say. Let's, you know, contrive the consultation process so that we get the outcome that we want. And then dares to pour scorn over me and Councillor Martin and Councillor Moran for actually standing up for the community interest. Well, I'm sorry, if you want to compare, you know, who's being fair dinkum here, I'd urge you to consider the record of Councillor Moran, Councillor Martin and myself, and the record of those who are proposing the former motion and determine who has the stronger track record when it comes to standing up for public space. I think the community know the answer to that question. I am sick of this nonsense. Now, if you want to get an actual outcome for our community, then commit to a genuine consultation. Stop this charade. If you don't, you'll vote against my proposal, and what you're going to do is lock this council into a claims consultation, which is designed to get the outcome you've wanted all along. Let's cut the nonsense. Yeah. Members, to the vote. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against? Oh, Fails. I've got so much to take along. <laughs> Councillors, the division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Thank you, members. That fails. We go back to the substantive. As that, would anybody else like to speak that hasn't already spoken? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Cross to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just want to make it clear that I actually haven't talked about my position in regards to the um, AFC proposal because I haven't seen it yet. I haven't talked about councillors. I, 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 I have not. I have not agreed to the proposal. I have not agreed to anything they presented because I don't know what it is. All I know is that they're going to submit something. We've just seen something, and that thing is just a thing that we can't even can't even. We can't even consult on because it's not even big enough to consult to the public to. So I don't understand what you guys are going on about. There is a proposal coming from them, and then we can assess it together with a need analysis report. I have not, I have not, I have not declared my position on this. And I resent the fact that you continually speak on my behalf. And I tell you what, Councillor Moran, you are the one that should be actually held accountable for the demise of this of, of this aquatic centre. You've been on council longest to know that this has been an issue for a very long time. It has been losing money for a very long time. And I want to see this centre continue. And I want to see it there for the community. I don't know if it's going to be with the AFC. I have no idea if I've made that decision yet. All I know is that I'm actually more looking forward to the need analysis report so we can make a decision in regards to the aquatic centre. I am disappointed on the amount of political games that you three play in this chamber. It is boring, it is sad, it is really, really, really childish, and it's beyond comprehension to the public to see you all, three of you, behave like children. Grow up. This is a capital city. This is not for you to laugh at me, because laughing at me, you are laughing at the people that elected me to be here. You are and for the members, that's enough, record, that's enough, Councillor that's enough, Moran. Councillor Kouros. Councillor Kouros. I have Kouros. no role here, Lord Mayor, and I don't <laughs> want to stop because I love it. <laughs> it okay. is really, really sad. Okay, Councillor Kouros, let's go. Let's finish <laughs> summing up on your motion. Thank you. At the end of the day, Lord Mayor, all we're asking for is a deadline and for that to be submitted, submitted with a needs analysis for the public to make a decision, not because 500 people voted for you to be here, for the whole public to make a decision. Do not talk to me. Thank you, councillors. We will go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to 15.11. Uh, Councillor Abraham's motion on notice, traffic calming North Street. 
Um, Councillor uh, Moran, are you leaving us? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I uh, move the motion as printed and I seek a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Cronall. Thank you, Councillor Cronall. I'm not going to uh, beat the, uh, um, the, the performance that we just had, so uh, let's make it short, sharp and shiny. Lord Mayor, I've had uh, um, some feedback uh, brought to me by some uh, local residents and also by the um, local um, uh, group in the northwest of the uh, Adelaide CBD, the uh, um, Western Village Association, who do a fantastic job in that uh, corner of the city, which is uh, my neighbourhood, I must admit. Um, uh, so all I've done, uh, Lord Mayor, is I've uh, relayed that information onto, uh, uh, onto our administration and we've managed to uh, formulate this, um, uh, this motion and I endorse it to the Chamber and I look forward to uh, the Member's support. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Is Councillor Cannell? Mm. Members? Oh, Councillor Sims? Thanks, Lord Mayor. And we do certainly need some traffic calming um, tonight. Uh, so, look, I, I do um, support this motion. Just a question of um, potentially the mover or administration. Um, I understand that uh, Weaver have been developing a proposal around traffic calming. Will that be considered um, as part of um, the report? Um, if, if not, um, I'd encourage you to, to look at it as part of the report. I okay. can sorry. answer that if, uh, if Catherine's, yep. Um, so yeah, yes, we uh, we have had, um, uh, th there's been a, a few discussions between uh, myself, Weaver and uh, Council Administration. There have been some um, uh, concept plans which are essentially Weaver's um, ideas on uh, on paper. Um, so that will be taken into account, yes. Right, thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Sum up. Thank you, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried unanimously. Um, no, you don't want to call a division on that one, Councillor? Um, that takes us to uh, item number 16, which is motions without notice. Yes, Councillor. I'd uh, like to thank my colleagues for a most entertaining evening. Do I need to? Councillor, you have taken the words right out of my mouth. I have actually seen some fabulous performances. As you know, I worked in culture as an exec producer of theatre shows for many years, and that has been one of the most enjoyable evenings I've had in a very long time. Thank you very much. And thank you for the amount of your patience and the amount of work that we've actually got through as well. Uh, on that note, I will declare the meeting closed. Thank you.